Our story begins in a huge city, our Texas. The city is one of the largest in the world. A cold wind blew through the street and there was a piercing darkness. In one of the houses, there was a man on a noose who showed no signs of life. His body was covered in scars and his hands were tied. Some kind of liquid was dripping from his mouth. His eyes were closed and cold sweat was running down his face. We are transported into the memories of our main character, Jake. The episode begins with gunfire and shouts to kill everyone. There was a massacre. People were dying every second. The smell of gunpowder was in the air. Screams were heard, along with the smell of gunpowder, there was a thick smell of blood. Everyone had to die. No one was going to take hostages. The screams of people could be heard many meters from the massacre itself. The ground was covered in blood. The carnage was so bloodthirsty that the fire even targeted civilians, children, women. No one was going to take hostages. The sky absorbed the color of the earth. It became bloody. Mountains of corpses lay on the ground, and there was a smell that pierced the body until it trembled. Among the entire crowd, a man could barely stand on his feet. This was our main character. A man stood next to a woman holding a small baby in her arms, who was trying to protect him from death. The baby was exhausted. Every bone was visible. He was sobbing. His mother hugged him tighter and tighter. Jake's gaze was cold, but at the same time pitiful. His tears turned scarlet. Suddenly, the man woke up, choking alarmingly from lack of oxygen. He opened his mouth and tried to pull higher. Drool flowed down his lips and screams were heard. His entire body tensed, every muscle trying to rise in order to survive. Jake lifted his legs up to loosen the grip of the noose on his neck. He pressed his feet against the ceiling and pushed off with his last strength. Suddenly, a noose burst out of the ceiling and our main character fell straight to the ground. Lying on the ground, the main character did not emit signs of life for several seconds. His body was tense. When suddenly he grabbed and began to spit, trying to breathe as much air into himself as possible. A few minutes later, he lay down, caught his breath, and exhaled with some bitterness. He was dissatisfied. There were two syringes and two pills on the windowsill. The syringes were empty and the needles were wet. Pulling the noose from his neck, the main character thought that he was useless because he could not die. Having thrown the noose from his neck, the main character's body appears before us, which speaks for itself that he has experienced a lot. It's a weekday. Everyone is going to work. Some kind of pain is felt in people's faces. And in the background on huge TVs, they are talking about the fact that some creatures have been discovered in some cities of their country. There is also a story in the Metro that the police are doing everything in their power to understand the reasons for the appearance of strange creatures. The population of the cities is in panic. The journalists showed what was happening in the cities and also added that the government would soon provide all residents with a shelter where they could hide from monsters. The city is all in turmoil. It would seem that just recently everyone was living a normal life, but everything changed literally overnight. The man standing in a hood and trying to hide his face stood thoughtfully. Some alarming cries of people were heard in the building. Reaching thoughtfully towards a shelf with some liquids, a cold sweat broke out across his body. Someone was watching him. As soon as he picked up water to satisfy his thirst, he heard some very strange sounds. They were rustling sounds. Suddenly, screams were heard in the distance of the store. These were cries for help, and squeals were heard. A crowd of people tried to escape. Some were screaming for help, while others were crying out for everyone to run and leave the store as quickly as possible. The man in the hood, looking at the running crowd of people, wondered, but at the same time a smile flashed across his face. When suddenly a picture of people stumbling over each other appeared before him, a roar was heard. People were lying on the ground, screams were heard, when suddenly some monster with a knife jumped on them. Another monster appeared behind this monster. One man managed to get up and began to run away, shouting for someone to save him. The man with a hood on his head stood motionless from the outside one might think that he fell into a stupor after what he saw. A monster stood right above the man lying on the ground. He was crying, realizing that this was his end. He could not even move from fear. Three monsters stood covered in blood. They were goblins. They made certain roars similar to animals. One of them had a knife. The other held a severed human hand in his mouth and the third was enjoying the prey while looking at the woman lying on the ground. The man was surprised. He didn't understand who they were. The thought even occurred to him that he still hadn't recovered from yesterday's drugs. He couldn't believe his eyes.
The goblins screaming rushed in his direction as soon as they saw him. They were driven by some animal instincts. They just wanted to kill. Suddenly a creature attacked the main character. It jumped, making some strange sounds, trying to plunge a knife into our hero. The man, looking back to see some strange creature flying at him, took a deep breath. When suddenly he hit the goblin flying towards him right in the head, throwing him back several meters, the goblin, flying in shock, did not understand how an ordinary person could resist him. Having sent the creature incomprehensible to humans into flight, it fell on the other two fleeing monsters, thereby dropping them to the ground. Jumping up from the ground, they looked at the unarmed man, screaming, screaming, and drooling. They wanted to eat him. Behind Jake stood two more goblins who stood directly above the lying man, letting their nasty drool on him. Suddenly, Jake remembered that yesterday he did not use drugs, but tried to hang himself. But now he had even more questions about what kind of creatures these were. Suddenly, the goblins standing behind our main character rushed towards him, and together with them, the monsters standing in front of him, who had come to their senses, also went towards the main character. They squealed and screamed as they ran towards our main character. They resembled rabid wolves driven only by a thirst for blood. Our hero was seasoned in battle, so the attack did not bother him. He threw a bottle of water at one of the attackers, thereby hitting him right in the head, and he fell. Suddenly, the battle began. One by one, the goblins flew away from our hero. He demonstrated high hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. When suddenly one of the goblins was right next to him, it seemed that Jake was finished. But that was not the case, the man dodged. He wondered what they were trying to do. Grabbing one of the attackers by the hand that held the bat, he punched the monster right in the face. The blow was so powerful that even the second goblin standing behind it flew away. Jake thought it was a dream. At the moment of contact between the two goblins, the main character redirected his body weight to the side, thereby throwing the two goblins directly to the ground. They could not get up. Their wounds were painful. They could not even get up from the ground. At this time, the goblins flew away one after another, our main character threw them in different directions. His one blow was so powerful that even after one blow, they could no longer get up. When suddenly he grabbed a knife in his hands, his swing seemed so piercing that it could even cut the air. Standing on the mountain of creatures, he swung, reflecting on the fact that he had wanted to die for so long, but he just couldn't do it. But now he realized that fate was preparing him for this. Now he didn't want to die, clenching his teeth and casting a cold glance around. As soon as he was sure that there was no one around him, he began to lower the knife towards the creatures with tremendous speed. But the entire store heard sounds piercing flesh. There was a thick smell of blood. The sounds did not stop even for a second. After some time, the sounds stopped. The main character rose from his knee and stood on his feet. Leaving slowly, he could not understand what was happening, and behind him lay a mountain of dead monsters. Their blood was of an incomprehensible color. Adjusting his hood, he walked in his thoughts, trying to avoid prying eyes. His breaths were heavy. Walking closer to the entrance of the store, he saw that everything was destroyed. Because of his past, he understood what kind of house was happening here. He thought that the end had come for this world. Small swings of the bat were heard. The creaking of gloves on the handle was heard for several tens of meters around. Along with the creaks and waves, screams were also heard at first glance, the baseball player was attacked by a whole horde of goblins. He screamed for them to leave him. He wants to live, continuing to swing and trying to fight them off. Just like the others, he could not understand what kind of monsters these were and where they came from, why they were trying to kill him. His fear was visible on his face. His face was covered with cold sweat. He thought that now he could be in training, but no, he decided to run away from it. Was this really some kind of punishment from his coach? When suddenly Blade's memories appear before us, screams were heard in the gym that he felt sick, and therefore he decided to leave training early. While trying to climb over the fence, he hears the trainer's screams. Blade throws the bag over the fence and then climbs over it himself. Jumping off it, he takes the bag in his hands and begins to run away. Running away, he says that he needs a good rest. His training has been hard lately, so he needs rest. The young man ran away with a smile. We return to the present. Blade stops the blow with a key. The roar is heard throughout the internet cafe. But the goblin's blow was powerful. He couldn't withstand it and flew back. The recoil was so powerful that his whole body shook. He falls and hits his head directly on the shelves, the bat flying out of his hands. 
Scratching his head, the young man looked at the ground. The blow to his head was strong, so the boy came to his senses only after a few seconds. When he came to his senses, the goblins were already almost near him. But suddenly some object flew at one of the goblins. The blow was strong. It sent the goblin flying. Someone threw a frying pan at them. The falling goblin fell on another goblin running nearby, and they fell. When suddenly the main character appeared, his blows were so fast that it was not really possible to see his movements, but splashes of blue blood scattered throughout the store. Having finished with the fleeing monsters, he rushed at the two lying on the ground. The goblin was surprised, and also fear overtook him, seeing the goblin's eyes. The main character wondered if these monsters could experience fear. Maybe they understand us. They were killed in an instant. Throwing the screwdriver to the ground, he exhaled heavily again. Adjusting his hood, he asked Blade whether he was alive. If so, he said to follow him. Taking off his hood and looking sternly at the boy, Jason added that if the guy wants to survive, then he must follow all his orders. Sweat was running down Blade's face. In a surprised voice, he answered well. He could not believe that he had survived, and also that some person could cope with a horde of monsters. The main character looking to the side, the baseball player did not understand what Jason could see in the distance. When suddenly Jason rushed to the side, the guy screamed for him to stop, but he didn't hear him. The guy couldn't believe how he could leave him so easily. Grabbing the bat, he thought that it was better with it than with empty hands. Having caught up with the man, he asked him why he didn't wait for him. When suddenly he saw a huge monster, Jason's look spoke for itself. This monster was much more dangerous than all the previous ones. They were shocked by what they saw, because this incomprehensible creature looked much more dangerous than those they had already encountered. From Blade's eyes, anyone could understand that the guy was very scared. Jason only showed a surprised look. When suddenly a huge monster moved to attack the man, the guy couldn't even move. He just tried to defend himself. At this time, our main character was already running to his aide, who caught his head and tried to save the unarmed guy. The monster noticed a man approaching him, who showed no fear. Jason's gaze was as stern as possible. With just one glance, he showed his advantage in strength. As soon as the monster was in the man's strike zone, he struck him several times with a bat. The blows did not stop, one by one injuring the monster. It would seem that the monster was about to fall from the number of blows dealt to it. The blows were so powerful that the roar spread throughout the entire store. The main character was a little shocked that his blows felt like he was hitting a mountain. Like a friend, the monster grabbed our hero's bat, thereby preventing him from delivering another blow. His grip was so powerful that he could break an iron bat. Holding a bat with his left hand, the strange creature tried to strike Jason. But he immediately dodged, bending down and bouncing off the ground. Jason grabbed the racket, breaking off part of it, thereby making a sharp stake at the end of the handle. With quick movements that were barely visible to the eyes of an ordinary person, the man struck the monster. The goblin screamed with incomprehensible squeals, trying to grab onto our hero. But before he can grab Jason, our main character strikes the huge goblin with the sharp end of the racket right in the eye. The creature is confused, it screams in pain, covering its wound with its hand, its eye is bleeding. The monster is furious with what is happening, because just like an ordinary person can fight with him, he can also inflict wounds on him. The goblin goes into a rage. His scream is so loud that it covers the ears of many meters around him. For a second, even the main character doubted, falling into a slight stupor from what he saw. Blade still stood in a stupor and could not move, looking at what was happening. The people lying around thought that their end had come. They could not move to escape. Tears were running down their faces. The main character, clutching the bat, exhaled heavily. At this time, a creature had already attacked him. Its swing seemed so huge that it was comparable to a falling boulder right on our hero. Jason screaming incomprehensible sounds raised the bat above his face. Thus, trying to block the goblin's blow, the bat cracked again. The man flew back, hitting the shelves behind him directly with his back. Our hero did not get up, but the monster stood looking at the ground with his hand raised, showing his advantage. Grabbing the handle of the racket, the goblin noticed that a man was standing behind him and not moving. It was Blade. The creature, looking at the guy, pulled out part of the racket from its eye. Sweat ran down the young man's face as he thought about how things could have changed if he had stayed for training instead of running away from it. The goblin threw the part of the racket aside, 
Blade began to tremble with fear. Everyone around them understood that the only one who could protect them was either dead or so wounded that he couldn't even move. The child seemed so scared that his eyes went blank. Her mother thought the child had died of fear. Blade begged his body to move, huge drops of sweat running down his face. His heart seemed to be trying to jump out of his chest. His heartbeats became faster and faster. When suddenly the young man screamed, clenching his fists, he managed to move. The creature did not understand what was happening. It amused him. Incomprehensible sounds began to be made from Blade. It seemed that the air near his body was distorted. People were still in panic. They could not move. Only the sounds of groaning were heard from them. Blade couldn't understand because he feels that every cell of his body seems to be permeated with some kind of energy. Grabbing the bat, he looked at the monster standing in front of him, thinking that a fire was now happening in his body he was overwhelmed by some incomprehensible force. Suddenly, Jason jumped onto the goblin's back, wrapping some kind of thread around his neck. The protagonist's hands were incredibly tense, squeezing the monster's neck more and more tightly. Blade screamed boss, was glad to see him. Jason at this time continued to squeeze the creature's neck more and more. After some thread in the hands of our main character was stretched to such an extent that it seemed like a razor, he jumped off it. Pulling the monster to the ground, Jason told the goblin that he saluted him because he could still move. The creature tried to resist. But suddenly the man changed his grip, pressing his back against the goblin's back and pulling him even further down. Jason turned to Blade, asking him, or if he was still passed out, if he really had a bat in his hands for beauty. The young man did not know how to respond to his comrade's call. Suddenly, without realizing it, Blade rushed towards the monster, hitting him with a powerful blow. Blue blood scattered several tens of meters around, and the sound of bones cracking was heard. Dozens of people were lying around. Shelves were broken. There was just chaos all around. People set up a shelter right in the store. They were afraid to go outside, because they did not know what could await them there. The human spirit was broken. They did not understand how to live further. When Blade and Jason approached them, they looked at them frantically, expecting them to give them at least some hope for life. Blade couldn't believe that just seven hours had changed his life so much. He couldn't believe that the problems before were so harmless compared to now. The young man looked at Jason. He was curious to know about his past. He understood that his past was difficult. There were only a few people left alive, and it was thanks to Jason. If it weren't for him, everyone would have died. Even I would have died, Blade thought. Blade evacuated the helpless, and Jason himself killed these creatures. There was not a drop of confusion in his gaze, only confidence. Everyone was panicked, but not our main character. He easily defended one department of the store after another. But for Jason, the state of affairs seemed as absurd as possible. Looking at Blade, our main character asked him to take off his gloves. The guy could not believe his eyes because some kind of sign similar to a tattoo appeared on his hand. This power manifests itself only in four, perhaps five percent of people. They are called awakened. The man speaking to the guy told him that in their situation it was necessary to transmit information faster, so they would give this thing a simple name. Naturally, the young man agreed with this. Taking a part of the goblin in his hand, the main character added that most likely this mark is somehow connected with these creatures, but he does not yet know how. He also added that some properties can be checked using the phone. Jason instructed Blade to transfer all the dead bodies of goblins to the meat department of the department store. The young man was dumbfounded by the order, because before that he had never had to do this, he was sick of the dead bodies. The guy reasoned that he most likely guessed why Jason needed bodies in one place, because he was covered in blood, and in principle, in general terms, he probably understood why he needed it. At this time, the man tested his new strength. He also shared with others the information he knew. Despite the panic, people believed the man standing in front of them because they considered him a hero who saved them. After all, if it weren't for him, most people would have died at the hands of monsters. Also recently, he taught three attackers a lesson who tried to take advantage of the panic, and thanks to this, people began to trust him even more. Standing in front of the people, he wanted to share some more information in front of them. When suddenly a woman in a white robe stood up and showed the mark, she was wondering what it was. 
Blade remembered that this woman was trying to resist those people who wanted to take advantage of the situation and cause even more panic. At this time, Jason put on his hood and began to tell, in order to survive, you need to think only about yourself. But he was going to talk about all the eels. He also added that there is no point in hiding information because the end of the world is coming. He also let slip about some crystals. The woman was interested in this, so she asked the guys what crystals they had just said about. The man, making a stern face, began to talk about crystals. After his story, many were shocked, because how could there be crystals in the bodies of monsters, and why do they need them? He also added that using the phone you can see the characteristics of both monsters and people, and crystals are needed to improve their own characteristics. He also added that they need to leave here, but the woman objected. The main character began to explain that this was only a temporary shelter. Monsters would soon arrive here again, but the woman objected that the situation outside could be much worse than now. But Jason, without letting the woman finish, said something like that no one would come to save them, since in six hours, no one even tried to enter. And how can she say that the situation outside is worse than here, if she is not there? Was. The main character stood in his position to leave this store as quickly as possible, but the woman continued to challenge this position. The woman began shouting that this place was safe at the moment, that not everyone would be able to move quickly. There were children, elderly people, and the wounded in the store. Suddenly, Jason glanced anxiously at the entrance. He shouted for everyone to move away from the entrance. No one understood why or why they should move away. Suddenly, there seemed to be an explosion. The entrance shattered. People fell to the ground. Blade and Jason immediately realized what was happening. The woman was shocked. A huge monster emerged from behind the broken body. It was larger than the previous one. The roar it made was much more terrible than that huge goblin and its mouth was larger. Jason frantically said that everyone should remain in their places. This creature is more dangerous, much more dangerous than the previous one. But in just a few moments, with just one swing, several people were sent flying into the air, blood filling everything around. Blade's hand began to glow with a blue aura again. He collected it all in his hand in order to attack the monster. Suddenly, the monster was sent flying, hitting its back against a concrete wall. He did not stop pushing the monster into the wall with his strength, stronger and stronger. But the energy took a lot of strength from Jason. He felt his strength gradually leaving him. He said that the monster appeared at the right time, because he wanted to test his new abilities. Everyone was surprised by the strength of our hero. They compared him to the power of a tank. The woman in the robe, without thinking, said that she agreed that it was unsafe to stay here. There was a cracking sound from the wall, a roar from concrete breaking, and the monster's body was trembling. The monster was able to touch the ground with his foot. He tried to push off from it, gathering all his strength in his legs. Jason's face was covered with sweat. Because his strength was leaving his body, he thought that he would easily break his neck, since it was so easy for him to bend iron in his teeth. His comrades realized that he would not last long. Jason screamed for Blade to get everyone out of here. The guy didn't know what to do. While Blade stood in a stupor, the monster began to scream. There was a roar. The monster was able to move, thereby reflecting its compressed aura. The recoil threw the man back a little, leaving his body weak. An ordinary person would not be able to stand on his feet after losing so much strength, but Jason's body was hardened by numerous battles and training when suddenly a loud creaking sound from sneakers echoed across the ground. Blade took the weight in his hand, and together with it, he rushed towards the huge monster. He screamed, wanted to kill this creature and protect his comrade. Approaching the huge monster, he hit it, and there was a roar from the impact. The young man was glad, because he hit the bull's eye, when suddenly he heard Jason yelling at him to be careful. Blade noticed at this moment that the weight was broken. He was shocked by this. Turning around after his partner shouted, he saw that he was about to be attacked by this giant. Having tried to block the blow, something in his hand crunched, and in his face one could see the pain Blade experienced at the moment of the blow. The monster, with its colossal blow, threw the guy several meters away. The guy even turned over several times, groaning in pain. The surviving people were shocked by the power of the giant. They did not understand what to do, because all hope was broken. Blade lay on the ground, 
spitting blood, his body in great pain. At that moment, Jason rushed towards the monster. He thought that he had miscalculated his capabilities a little, which is why he got tired so quickly. While he was approaching the monster, he tried to collect his energy in his hand again. But when suddenly he realized something, he was surprised. The monster was also approaching our main character at that time. Jason quickly stopped and then jumped a little to the side. Having collected enough energy in his hand, Jason smiled as if he was enjoying the battles with these creatures. Raising his hand into the air, he began to release his aura, his face looking ominous. The monster was a little stunned, making some sounds. He looked at the man. The giant tried to ram our hero, but he jumped even further to the side. There was a roar. Huge clouds of dust rose. Fragments flew in different directions, raising even more dust. At this time, Jason was cheerfully on some pipe. He managed to grab onto it with the help of his energy. His face was satisfied. There was a huge crash and the wall was broken. Jason was a little wary, his eyes showing a little weakness. Jumping down, he watched the actions of a huge creature, which had just been able to break through a huge concrete wall so easily. When suddenly he grabs a canister of fuel, during the moment of the fight, he was already able to look around and build a plan in his head. Opening the canister a little, he threw it straight at the monster, taking out a lighter and lighting it, showing a small smile on his face. With his strong swing, he sent the lighter flying straight towards the giant. An explosion occurred. It hit the giant directly. The creature groaned in pain. Everyone was again stunned by what they saw because they had already lost hope when suddenly there was victory. Jason immediately rushed towards Blade, who was lying on the ground. Ella asked if he was okay, to which he only groaned and trembled. The man asked the guy if he could move, to which the young man replied that he was in pain. Jason began to replay the situation in his head, because at first he did not understand how Blade recovered so quickly after such a strong blow, but suddenly he realized that he himself was able to easily get up after the same blow. The woman asked the main character whether he was okay, whether all the wounds had healed so quickly. They understood that it was dangerous to be here, so they began to decide who would drive the car. Jason ordered everyone to leave, and he would deal with the monster. They could not understand which monster because he had won. But the look of our hero spoke for itself. Victory was still far away. The monster entered again with a roar. There were no significant wounds on its body. Screaming again, Jason told them to leave the department store as quickly as possible. People were again scared. Could the monster still be alive even after such a powerful explosion? They didn't understand it. The creature stood right in front of them, grinning and still making terrible roars. Everyone began to run away. They left their hero with sadness on their faces. The sounds of people running echoed throughout the store, everyone trying to leave it as quickly as possible. All that was heard were requests that no one was pushed and ran as quickly as possible. Blade and Ella ran ahead. The young man had already recovered from the monster's attack. His wounds had healed. Suddenly, out of nowhere, the goblins burst in again, emitting the already familiar squeals for Blade. But the guy did not lose heart and was not afraid, instantly striking at these vile creatures. Approaching the entrance, people began to break into it, breaking down the doors of the store. At this time, a battle was already underway between the giant and Jason. The main character dodged the creature's blows one by one. The monster's blows seemed much more powerful than they had been before, but the man was not inferior to him, dodging all his attempts to hurt him. There was a roar all around when suddenly Jason was able to wound the monster. But all our hero's weapons broke just from touching him. The man, locking eyes with the giant, shouted for him to come to him and attack. The monster rushed towards the hero. The people who came out were shocked by what was happening. No one could understand what happened and where they were, because it seemed that they were in a completely different city. They saw the house that was happening around the city was covered in darkness. There were roars and explosions throughout the city. Not a single lamp was shining. Ella looked around. Blade asked her what she was looking for, but she remained silent. When suddenly she rushed towards the bus, the young man realized that she was looking for a vehicle for everyone. When suddenly a crash was heard out of nowhere, they saw a flying monster. The monster fell straight down, and Jason fell above him holding a nearly broken knife in his hands. Grabbing the monster's forearm, the main character tried to strike. An eerie sound was heard, 
It was the sound of a huge boulder falling on the ground, fragments of the car scattered many meters around. Blade shouted the boss in alarm. Ella looked frightened in the direction of their fall. Literally at the same time, Jason flew away. Saying surprised words, Jason tried to stand up, blood coming from his mouth. But the monster seemed as if there were no wounds. He instantly stood up. His skin was as strong as steel. The main character shouted that they should not stand there but run away. Blade and Ella were surprised. Their mouths were open. The man grabbed the pole, showing signs of laughter. Ripping the pillar out of the ground, he raised it, waving it above him and signaling for the monster to attack. Shouting to the monster to show what it was made of, he rushed towards it. The monster, roaring, also went towards our hero. At this time, a young man and a woman ran into the bus. Blade anxiously asked her if she knew how to drive a bus, to which she answered no, but with a grin on her face added that she was not much different from a car. The key was lying right on the dashboard. Ella grabbed it. They were a little shocked at their luck that the key was in the bus. At this time, a battle was going on between Jason and the giant for life and death. They dealt terrible blows to each other, dodged, and there was a battle of attrition between them. Second after second, huge roars were heard from their impacts. No one could believe that the man was so strong because he was fighting such a huge monster on equal terms. The monster made roars, but the roars seemed already tired. Jason was glad that the monster was still alive because the battle was not over. Throwing back the bat, they were about to enter hand-to-hand -hand combat. Suddenly, there was the sound of wheels approaching our hero. The hero looked around, quickly casting a glance to the side in surprise. Sweat did not stop flowing down his face. The monster looked at Jason. He did not stop making an ominous roar. At this time, Ella was driving the bus, screaming and pressing on the gas, sending the bus towards the monster. At the last moment, the monster turned around, seeing a huge bus moving towards him. Jason jumped to the side and the giant turned towards the bus. Still making roars, he raised his hands. He wanted to stop the bus. The main character slid along the ground, watching the collision. There was a noise. The bus collided as if with a tank. The creature tried to stop the bus. The front of the bus was crushed. The monster slid along the ground. The sound of bus parts breaking was heard as the creature tried to stop it. Blade shouted that Ella was pressing harder on the gas, to which she replied that she was already pressing all the way on the gas. When suddenly the giant felt that energy was gathering somewhere, he instantly turned towards Jason. But it was already too late. Jason had gathered enough energy in his hand. The main character said that he understands that the bus's impact will not kill him, but while he is busy stopping it, it can twist his neck. When suddenly the monster's grip began to weaken, the blow hit the entire part of the monster. There was an ear-numbing noise and the bus stood on its front wheels. The guy screamed, squeezing the woman's neck. Ella screamed for Blade to loosen his grip because he could strangle her. Jason, screaming for the giant to say hello to the devil from him, began to squeeze his neck. There was a crunch and a squeal from the monster. Its neck was broken. The impact of the bus knocked the monster into the wall and a column of dust rose. People couldn't believe they could really kill him. The bus stopped moving, the wall was broken, the roar of the engine died down. Everyone was delighted with what they had just seen. Jason continued to release energy, directing it towards the monster, releasing more and more of it. Exhaling a sigh of relief, he stopped releasing energy, his gaze tired. Lowering his hand, the energy in his hand began to dissipate. The main character couldn't believe that he breathed a sigh of relief for the first time in so long. He couldn't believe that he tried to kill himself several times. But in this situation, having avoided death, he breathed a sigh of relief. He was happy. Looking at the ground, he thought that he was good for nothing. His laughter was incomprehensible. When suddenly his gaze became cold, he added that this would not do. At this time, Ella was lying on the bus and Jason was on top of her. He asked the woman if she was normal. His gaze was alarming. Ella told him that he was an idiot. He almost killed her twice, but the guy didn't listen to her. He was glad that she was safe. She was interested in what happened to the monster, whether they won, but Blade was not interested. He was glad that she was safe. He helped her get up. The young man also helped her get off the bus, repeating everything whether she was okay. Getting off the bus, they saw Jason standing over the corpse of the monster, holding an axe in his hands. They shouted in surprise they did not understand what our hero was trying to do. Looking at him anxiously, they could not utter a word but only looked at his actions. 
Jason struck blow after blow at the monster's body, cutting it into pieces, blood flying in different directions. Taking the crystal out of his body, Jason ate it. They could not utter a word, but only watched him as their comrade swallowed the stone. Ella thought that while working as an internship for several years, she had seen a lot, and the smell from the corpses was similar to Jason's. Adding that the man standing in front of her is a real evil demon who is standing on the mountain of the dead and drowning in seas of blood. After some time, when everyone had moved away from the battle, they began to get ready to go. Packing bags with the essentials for their survival, others around them took an example from them and also began to collect the most necessary things. Pulling the hood over his head and taking the backpack on his back, Jason looked around. Everyone was ready to hit the road. They went to the city hall. Fortunately for them, there were no monsters around. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief, but the main character invited everyone to move on. But this time, only the awakened ones can move on with him. Everyone was surprised by Jason's words, because they understood that without the awakened ones, they would not survive. They cursed them. The trio set off, leaving people at the city hall. Blade and Ella understood that the city hall had enough medicine, food, and weapons. They strengthened the doors with machines. Their chances of surviving there were much higher than moving on with Jason. The people who remained in the mayor's office could become easy prey for the monsters, because no one knows what awaits them next. They tried to convince themselves that they had made the right choice by leaving them there. Now they were moving to the military district. On the way there was supposed to be a police station. They wanted to take weapons there. Jason said that he would move ahead, let Ella and Blade follow him, but not relax and look around. He also added that any mistake they make could lead to death, so they need to be careful. Entering the station, they saw mountains of corpses and the smell of blood was in the air. Jason, bending down to the first person who was lying on the ground, said that he died about six, seven hours ago, and the cause of death was a bullet that went right through. Our hero also gave the order that Blade remove the corpses and block the doors as much as possible. Ella looked at the corpses of people. Jason looked around. The woman noticed one of the bags. It seemed somehow significant to her. Taking out a cup from her bag, she showed it to her comrades. Opening the phone, she pointed it at the cup, which gave out some information about her. Jason read that this was the healing cup of God. Blade was delighted because this was quite an important thing. The main character, looking at the young man, made it clear with just one glance that there was no need to shout. Holding the bowl, she began to absorb Ella's energy. The bowl began to fill with water. A splash was made, and a certain sound was made inside it. At first, no one understood how the cup was filled, except for filling it on its own. It was also illuminated with a bright aura. They decided to check it out. They started pouring water on Jason's wounds, when suddenly a little steam began to appear, and the wounds began to heal. Blade cried out that their sister is now their healer. This is wonderful. Jason smiled. The man also added that the risks of using it are still high, because they take a lot of energy. But the thing is very useful. The man found several pistols and began to explain how to use them. The girl and guy were happy with the find. They, of course, did not know whether they would be able to use it. But now they have a means of protection. When suddenly a cold sweat ran down Jason's face, his comrades asked what happened and why he was so tense. Suddenly, Jason's gaze changed. He became even more frightened. The young man's gaze was even more frightened, and a trembling ran through his body. Ella and Blade fell to the ground, trembling. Their strength seemed to leave their bodies. Jason rushed to the door. Opening the door, he felt some kind of horror. His face was covered in cold sweat again. His gaze did not change. He looked into the sky. He saw something terrible there. Something was flying right above him in the night sky. There was a loud cry of powerful swings that seemed to cut through the air. It was a huge monster. It was much larger than the others. Its aura was overwhelming. Jason's body trembled a little because this was another fight with a powerful creature. His whole body tensed and his gaze became stern. It seemed that the main character was scared, but no, he was delighted with what he saw. He didn't understand where such power came from, because he just flew past them, but his body trembled. He felt danger. But at that moment he heard some sounds. Turning to his comrades, he realized that not only his body felt fear. A girl and a guy were lying on the ground. Their bodies were exhausted. Ella seemed to be in worse condition than Blade, so our protagonist ran to her first, starting CPR. In addition to artificial respiration, he massaged her heart, 
squeezing her chest, but nothing helped. Having listened to the heartbeat, he heard a slight heartbeat, but there was no breathing. Then he remembered the healing cup. Grabbing her, he gave the containing liquid in the cup to his comrades to drink. They began to come to their senses, both coughing. The girl and the guy could not understand why they suddenly began to choke. Jason said that they were changing plans so they would rest here for a while and then move on. It was still dark on the street. A cold breeze was blowing, which seemed to cut through the body. Time passed. Jason's comrades were resting, but the man could not close his eyes even for a second. He was immersed in his thoughts. The sun appeared. The darkness began to disappear on the streets of the city. Some time passed and the sounds of battle were heard. Blade knocked back the goblins one by one, hitting them with a bat. The goblins flew off in batches. The guy was glad because he had become much stronger since the last battle. He had learned to use his new strength. Having dealt with everyone, he turned to Jason asking what they would do next. Chopping goblins to get their crystals, the man told his comrades to use their power correctly because no one had yet mastered it perfectly and for any mistake you could pay. Throwing the crystals, he added that if there were a more powerful creature here, such weak goblins would not dare to be here. While eating the crystals, Ella said that they tasted like that. Jason added that they were leaving here. The girl thought that they had been wandering here for half an hour, but it felt like they were not avoiding monsters, but rather looking for them. At this time, the man was thinking that such weak monsters needed to be hunted. At this rate, they would slowly but safely accumulate strength. At this time, the sounds of gunfire were heard nearby. Huge barricades were created by the military who fired at the monsters. The crowd of soldiers fired machine guns, and the overwhelming sounds of numerous shots were heard. Goblins fell one after another from being hit by bullets. There were a large number of them. They were countless. One by one, they tried to break through the barricade, but they were unable to break through it. Along with the sounds of gunfire, the monster's squeals of pain were also heard. A military girl was reloading her machine gun. He was the commander of the defense. She shouted for her comrades to hold the line of defense and not let anyone through. When suddenly a roar began to be heard. A loud roar was heard. The small monsters turned around and a huge goblin appeared from behind them. The military were shocked by the size of the monster. When suddenly their girl commander shouted for them not to stop firing, the sounds of gunfire were heard again. She also added that they took out grenades. The bullets, one after another, pierced the body of the fat monster. Having taken out the grenades and removed the pin, the soldiers, one by one, began to throw the huge thing in the direction. Explosions were heard one after another. The little goblins died one by one. One of the soldiers hit the monster directly in the head with a grenade, and an explosion occurred. A fire broke out on the creature's body. The heat seemed to burn the monster's body, but the flames began to subside, and its wounds instantly healed. The fat man breaks through the defense, breaking the military formation. The military begins to retreat. Following the fat man, small monsters began to attack people, and people's screams were heard. The smell of blood rose in the air and red filled the ground. The commander shouted for them to move to the next line of defense. But the monster did not stop attacking people, killing the military one by one, when suddenly he found himself right next to their commander. But she managed to dodge the powerful blow, and the roar of breaking earth was heard. The monsters did not stop attacking, it seemed that there was no end to them. But the girl commander fought off the creatures attacking her. Turning around and looking straight, the girl saw a big man approaching her. Her body doubted for a second, trembling past. She realized that she did not have time to dodge. The monster's hand was caught right in front of the military girl's face. She didn't understand what happened. Jason was standing nearby who stopped the monster's blow. The military brigade did not understand what was happening, how he was able to stop the advance of the monster. There was a crash behind Jason. He told the girl that she was leaving if she wanted to live. At this moment, Blade was already attacking the monster, striking its neck with a bat. He struck the monster's face with blow after blow, and terrible sounds were heard. Blade screamed at him to get paid for his many kills. While shouting this, he continued to deal terrible blows to the monster. The girl lying on the ground could not believe what she saw, because the firepower of the machine guns could not inflict such wounds as he inflicts with an ordinary bat. Blade stopped striking at the monster. 
At that moment, Jason shouted that they were leaving. The young man grabbed the girl by the hand and began to run away. While running away, the girl asked the guy what he was doing, to which he replied that the boss would finish with him. Taking the canister and opening it slightly, he swung it. He threw the canister followed by the lighter right at this fat man. Continuing to hold him in place with her incredible strength, a fire occurred. The flames began to spread, followed by an explosion. Moments later, the creature's entire body was on fire. Having run back to Ella, the woman explained to the military girl that clay hardens when it meets fire, but the military girl did not understand what she meant. Jason's hand began to harden. This was his strengthening. The flames began to subside, and the monster showed signs of healing. The fat man let out a growl but did not move. At that moment, Jason was already approaching him, swinging his reinforced arm. There was an impact it seemed so powerful that it could be compared to the ramming of a tank. The creature's body began to shatter into small pieces. Not only the military were surprised, but also Ella and Blade, because they saw Jason's new strength. Elsa was shocked. She wondered more and more if it was a person standing in front of her. Jason's arm was returning to normal and he was calm. The broken barricades of the people, which took so long to build, were broken in an instant. After some time, she saw Jason taking some kind of crystal into his mouth. Replaying the moments in her head, Elsa thought that the monsters appeared only yesterday. The trained officers were immediately killed by them. In addition, later the connection was interrupted. The enemy defeated the command regiment. Fear of the enemy ultimately caused her to lose morale. She managed to gather the remnants of her troops and hold the line of defense. But she watched the fighters die, after which she began to feel weak. And it was at that moment that she met Jason, who was able to so easily deal with what an entire army could not. She looked at him with stunned eyes, seeing her hero in him. Jason turned to Elsa, asking her if she was the commander, to which she replied that she was. Jason added that they should quickly gear up, because they need to get rid of the rest. The main character also added that Ella would treat the wounded, and Blade would help with defense. The lieutenant and the rest of the remaining military should cover them, but she screamed, so that our hero would not drive his horses and give orders, because they do not know who he is. Without letting the girl finish, he added that there was most likely a commander inside, because the goblins' attack was quite organized, and if they didn't kill everyone now, the attacks would be repeated. Without allowing the commander to object, he told them to begin preparing for the attack. Seeing his power, the military regained their morale and followed their savior. They rushed to the attack. Everyone followed him without any alarm. The woman could not even object to him because the orders were clear and his goals were clear. Taking a machine gun in his hands, he showed high shooting skills, hitting the target and killing the creatures one by one. In addition to his shooting skills, he demonstrated high hand-to-hand -hand performance. They never stopped moving forward. Jason's commands were successful. Elsa couldn't even imagine where he got such high skills in shooting and hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as organized orders. When suddenly there was a roar, Jason managed to protect the commander's girlfriend. Immediately rising to his feet, he peered into the raised dust. Behind her appeared a demon holding some kind of staff in his hands. The girl asked the man if it was a bomb, to which he replied no. The demon's gaze was terrifying, and his roars made an ordinary person's body tremble. Our main character realized that they had found who they were looking for. It was the commander of this group of monsters. The girl broke into a sweat. She thought that her body wouldn't even be able to move now because the feeling of oppression and pressure was high. She realized that this creature's bullets didn't matter at all. Jason immediately gave her the order to aim and shoot at the leader, covering him. The demon cried out with a loud roar, raising his hand. A crowd of monsters went on the attack. This was an order to them from the demon but Jason had already collected enough energy for an attack in his knife. Elsa began shooting at the monster without releasing the trigger, but he raised some kind of curtain right in front of him. The bullets did not reach him, but stopped right in front of him. She didn't understand what was happening because how could bullets freeze in the air? But Jason had already dealt with the entire crowd of monsters, rushing towards their leader. He threw the knife, charged with his energy, right into the center of his staff, the knife flew at incredible speed. It seemed that the speed was comparable to a bullet. The monster's invisible field was shattered and the staff was broken, throwing the demon back. Following the knife, our main character approached the monster in order to finish off the demon. 
The battle was over. All the enemies were destroyed. The military were able to regain their line of defense. There was silence. The sounds of gunfire stopped. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Jason and Ella helped the military. At this time, Jason was resting on a bench, and Elsa was closely watching him. She thought that the man sitting right in front of her was very strange. Coming closer to him, she seemed to be trying to say something, but she couldn't speak first. Jason took the initiative, telling her that she could ask anything. There would be no such opportunity again. The girl thanked him, but at the same time clarified how he knew her name. Our main character said that her grandfather is a brigadier general, and five years ago they met in the military district. Elsa began to remember those events, trying to remember Jason. Next to her stood two generals. One of them was her grandfather, and next to the general opposite stood a man. Suddenly she remembered his cold face, which she found creepy at the time. The girl tried to ask her grandfather who they were, but her grandfather told her not to ask anything more about them and try not to intersect with them. Adding that their group has no divisions or ranks, they are like hungry wolves on the battlefield, killing everyone and everything. A small drop of sweat ran down the girl's face. She realized that he was also a soldier. Elsa was shocked because in front of her stood a member of a special squad, which is taboo for commanders in military districts. Jason walked close to Elsa. Our main character offered her a deal and asked her to gather all the soldiers. There was noise and running around in the building when suddenly they stopped. Before Jason and his comrades stood all the surviving soldiers from this barricade. The man will offer them that anyone can join him and move on or stay and defend the camp telling them that this disaster affected not only their city, but the whole country. Both places are not in the best condition, and some are even much worse. All the soldiers were in their own thoughts. They were afraid to admit the fact that they would have to fight these creatures again. Some began to lose faith in life. Jason, taking the bottle in his hand, sent it flying with the help of his strength, and then squeezed it, demonstrating his superiority. The girl reasoned that he was able to adapt to this new world. She had met creatures much more dangerous than they had seen. She asked him what they would get in return if they joined him. With a creepy look, Jason answered her and told everyone that thanks to him, their chances of survival would rise to another level, and the information he possessed would become available to them too. Sometime later, Jason entered the truck. There were soldiers in this truck, but their morale was suppressed. Elsa reasoned that the information they gave was useful, but it was not enough. Much more needed to be learned. Blade conveyed useful information to them. The girl thought that if it had been just a few days ago, she would have put Blade in a mental hospital for such nonsense. Blade said that the patterns on their hands distinguish them from ordinary people and that with the help of crystals they can level up. You can find out the characteristics of monsters through your phone by absorbing crystals of strong monsters, which show that they increase much more than if they were crystals of weak creatures. The orc crystal significantly increases knowledge of basic properties. The black orc crystal increases physical strength and abilities, improves the skill's physical defense, strengthening. The crystal of the clay monster increases the abilities, as well as the skills of physical defense, regeneration, and using the enhancement you can increase the speed. Crystal of the goblin shaman increases the skills of supernatural strength, magical resistance. Seeing their strength, no one could resist Jason and the other awakened ones. Elsa continued to reason. Ella was able to make a pill from several monsters. Using his phone, Jason checked the characteristics of the pill. Its characteristics were as follows. Slightly increases resistance to fear, recovery, concentration in battle. Slightly reduces sensitivity to pain and quickly depletes physical activity. Jason began to talk about how even an ordinary group of trained people could deal with weak monsters. But if there are higher monsters among them, it will be difficult. Looking at the pill, he ordered that they try to make one for everyone in order to increase their chances of survival. Ella and Blade changed into military uniforms. Blade asked Jason for permission to come up with a name for their squad. Jason, with a smirk on his face, allowed him to take charge. Blade, gathering his courage, cried out that the name, perhaps, is the bright path of morality hiding in the shadows, when suddenly, from the shadows, someone suggested simply M.O. M.O. translated as a mythical animal, he told about himself. His name is Scott, but he is not awakened, but really wants to help Jason. He also suggested that it is worth going to the museum where the bows are kept. 
Jason saw him as an unusual person, asking him who he was before, to which he replied that he was an expert in smuggling, creating counterfeits and selling them. When suddenly Jason shouted an order that they were leaving in half an hour, everyone should be on alert. Scott compared Jason's cold and scary gaze to monsters, although his gaze was even scarier to him. Blade praised his commander, saying that in just a few minutes he came up with such an ideal plan, and also found a truck with which he could not be afraid of small monsters. The guy did not shut his mouth, trying to dispel and distract the rest of the military. Blade, looking out the window, quietly said that he was interested in whether anyone was worried about him or not. He remembered how cold-blooded Jake really was towards everyone, but thanks to absorbing the crystals, he felt much better together with our main character. Looking at Ella and Elsa, the guy added that he was afraid of turning into one of these monsters. Looking into the distance, Scott felt uneasy. When suddenly an explosion occurred, the soldiers began to panic and ask about what was happening and leaned out of the windows. Everyone realized that the fire could not appear on its own, so they took out their weapons and began to take aim. Scott reasoned that buildings are crowded with people, so fires and secondary disasters are now quite normal. There was another explosion. Jason got out of the truck and slowly began to move towards the explosion. Stopping, he looked in the direction of the explosion, trying to see the cause of it. In some incomprehensible voice, he ordered everyone to take pills and prepare for battle. No one understood why their commander's voice changed so much. After giving the order for the others to wait for the order while Ella treated, he took a step forward, adding that Scott was coming to fight him. The expert was shocked by this. The young guy was shocked by the fact that he was sent into battle, but he still did not understand what was in front of him. In front of him stood a huge number of some kind of skeletons that looked like wolves. Jason told the guy to hold out for three minutes, fighting with those who were at the car. After asking him why he would fight alone, suddenly there was a rumble. A supreme monster appeared before them. Everyone trembled at what they saw, because he was huge than the others, and his thirst for blood could be felt even inside the truck. Suddenly the monster howled, taking out its claws. From his howl, a huge wind rose, which it would seem was about to knock Scott off his feet. The monster looked towards the truck, growling. When suddenly the sounds of gunfire were heard, Jason said he would take care of him. A crowd of small creatures rushed towards the military, emitting squeals. Jason fought back to back with Blade, throwing away the small creatures one after another, trying to get closer to their leader. When suddenly our main character grabbed a machine gun and started shooting, the supreme monster dodged the bullets. Jason was a little surprised by the monster's speed. Approaching the monster, he fired a shot directly into the shoulder. The monster howled. While the creature stood in a stupor, the man struck him with his elbow. The leader tried to attack our hero, but he dodged. He compared it to previous monsters, although he added that he was most likely stronger than them. They attacked each other, dodging the enemy's blows. Trying to attack the monster with a bayonet knife, Jason swung it, at which time the monster tried to pierce him with its claws. The man blocking the blow began to attack the monster. Jason's scream was heard. Blue blood stole the main character's hand. There was silence. The sounds of gunshots and screams stopped, and a huge number of corpses of monsters lay on the ground. The faces of the soldiers seemed tired because the battle was difficult. Scott couldn't say a word. He just thought about how cool it was right now. Right in front of him stood their commander, holding the leader's head in his hands. Jason's characteristics were increased. After giving orders about who was staying and who was moving into the museum, they headed into the building. Scott and Ella went with the man. Moving through the museum, they listened to every rustle, because they did not know whether there were any of the creatures in the building. Having found the bow and arrow, they checked it through their phones. The name of the arrow was lost. Jason reasoned that most likely, weapons are like people. Not everyone has abilities. But Scott tried to please his commander that he had another thing that had special qualities. A friend told him that there was another treasure in the museum. Moving through the museum, they listened to Scott's story about how his life used to be difficult. Suddenly, Ella smiled, and from her smile, everyone realized that they had found that same treasure. Looking at this thing, they could not look away even for a second. This was a golden bowl. Its level was third, and its value was special. With the help of this bowl, one could see the danger. They could not believe that some kind of thicket could predict the future. Suddenly, Elsa gives the order that everyone reloaded their weapons and moved towards the truck. 
The entire crowd of military men rushed towards the truck. Blade and Jason were already waiting near the truck. Hearing the sounds of running, the young man prepared for battle. The man standing next to him laughed, reassuring him that these were not monsters. A crowd of people moved towards them. There was darkness in their faces. Nobody understood what was happening, where such a crowd of people came from. Seeing the military, people began to cry with joy because they felt saved. As we got closer, cries of joy were heard. Blade recognized one of the girls he couldn't believe his eyes. Suddenly, Jason ordered to go to the museum because it was dangerous outside. No one could believe that such a huge crowd of people could get there. People said that in the capital of the city, some kind of flying monster was destroying the city. Fighter jets were using missiles to blow up bridges. Hearing this, Jason began to think that some other military base was still functioning, and judging by the distance, he assumed that it was the Air Force, but he still could not believe that the monster he had just fought came from the capital. Having given the order that today they were relaxing in museums, but at the same time Jason was not going to take any of the people with him. Elsa screamed that ordinary civilians should not be abandoned. Blade also cried out in displeasure, trying to convince people that the Major was joking. People were in a panic. They had just felt safe, but the military wanted to abandon them. They started shouting that it was his responsibility to protect them. To which Jason clearly and clearly answered that they are not military, but an organization of monster hunters. Their task is to kill monsters and not to save people. None of his subordinates are obliged to give their lives for their sake. Adding that if anyone tries to stop them from moving forward, they will face death. All the military men remembered the exploits of their major, so no one wanted to object to him. After all, in addition to fighting monsters, he also taught them a lot, such as how to charge a phone from car batteries. The soldiers were calm, because the commander's orders were always correct. The military understood that people would be in more danger with them than if they stayed here. Blade, Ella and Elsa began to persuade their commander to take people with him. After some thought, Jason said he would give them a chance. Having sent the military to retrieve the corpses of the monsters, Jason showed how to cut them up. Everyone except the children cut up the monsters. Twenty-two civilians passed his test. Suddenly, Scott ran up with a full golden cup. The cup filled itself. Jason immediately understood what was happening. Taking the cup from Scott, the Major began to drink the contents in the cup. Suddenly, the man's body became heavy and he began to sweat. A second later, he fell to the ground, without signs of life. Everyone was frightened by what was happening. Everyone was screaming. The Major was lying on the ground, motionless. He found himself in a place unfamiliar to him. Everything was in flames. He didn't understand why the body moved on its own. After some time, he helped Blade go, who asked him to leave. There were scars on the young man's face. The man did not understand why he was asking to leave him. Pushing him into the car, he gave the order for him to leave as quickly as possible. Blade shouted that Jason didn't have to sacrifice himself to save him. There was a roar. A column of dust rose, ordering Blade to leave. Jason grabbed his sword. Trying to persuade his commander to stay, the young man cried, but the man shouted that he would only get in the way. Having started the engine, Blade began to drive away, and our main character stood in a stupor, not understanding what kind of monster it was in front of him. As he began to channel his power into his sword, he prepared for what might be his last battle. Suddenly a huge monster appeared in front of him. Its size was impressive. Jason remembered that that night, this creature flew across the border. Starting to scream, he rushed towards the monster. When he suddenly opened his eyes, Scott, Ella, Lazy, and Blade appeared before him. Everyone began to inquire about his condition, but he remained silent. Rising up, he grabbed his head. His head seemed to be torn. Ella said the cause of his fainting was unknown, but his condition was absolutely good. When suddenly Jason said that he saw his death in a dream, everyone was surprised by this. He asked to bring him coffee. His eyes were empty. Drinking coffee, he said that he didn't know who would survive, but he would obviously die. He said that the great commander-in-chief, commander of the 10th Mechanized Infantry Regiment, is nearby. There is no front there, and they have enough firepower. He thinks that they still exist. Ella assumed that some organization wanted to get rid of them. Scott added that they needed to collect the exhibits because they should not fall into the hands of enemies. Blade tried to console his commander that they now knew the future and could avoid death. Looking at the ground, Jason thought about how to change the future. 
After some time, our heroes were loading into the truck when suddenly there was a roar of running. They saw huge monsters. They looked like pigs. Grunting sounds were heard. Ordering to wait for orders and save ammunition, Jason called Blade over, adding that they would deal with them. The soldiers anxiously agreed with the instructions of their commander. As Jason began to gather energy in his hand, he raised his hand. He directed his power into the approaching crowd of creatures. The monsters fell to the ground emitting squeals. Blade grabbed the bat and our protagonist used his arm boost. Having risen, the pig monsters began to move towards our heroes again. None of the ordinary people understood what two people were trying to do against such strong monsters. They wondered if they would die. Walking leisurely to meet them, the two guys smiled. The girl screamed Blade's name and told him to run away. When suddenly Blade swung his bat straight at the monster. At this time, Jason had already killed several creatures. Everyone was shocked that ordinary people fought monsters and also defeated them. Striking blow after blow, Blade killed the creatures. Jason, killing, moved through their crowd, scattering them in different directions. After some time, a huge crowd of monsters lay around them. Jason breathed a sigh of relief, saying it was easy. Even the military were shocked by the strength of Blade and Jason. They believed that they were much more dangerous than these monsters, and they were lucky to have them on their side. Getting out of the truck, they approached pigs the size of bulls. They did not understand how they could move them. Jason gave orders that they were returning to camp to get weapons and clothing, and they also needed to refit the vehicle. Everyone was busy with work, and there were shouts of joy. I could feel the cold outside. The wind was blowing when suddenly the sounds of an engine began to be heard. Everyone was on alert, aimed at the car, and the commander got out of it. There was a girl in military uniform with him. Blade said that this was a nurse. They found her in the city while they were on patrol. They saw a severed head, but the cut was made by something sharp and neat. They also discovered another organization called Miami. Their leader is called Mayan. No one could believe that they sacrificed people to monsters in order to survive. Everyone began to discuss this story when Jason suddenly interrupted them. He said that he wanted to go to them, but they interrupted him, saying that he would not go alone, they would go with him. Jason added that they are in fear, they just need to kill their leader and be done with it. He also said that they should not fight the entire group, and he also does not know their strength. After some silence, he said that he was good at stealth killings. No one understood the words of his commander. Before the major left, Ella asked him to return alive. It was snowing, and it began to feel like winter outside. Inside the building, there was a crowd of people discussing the coming of cold weather. While sitting, they discussed that Squad B had gone to deal with some creature that was trying to escape. From their conversations, it was clear that their scout had not returned. Jason stood with his mask and hood on, watching the building. There was a huge crowd of people behind him. He had to cope in an hour. Someone knocked on the door. Members of the Mamie group thought it was a scout squad. Suddenly, a truck burst through the door, throwing a crowd of people in different directions. Screams began to be heard that they were being attacked by an unknown person. The truck did not stop, but continued to accelerate. Suddenly the door opened and a man in a mask jumped out. No one could understand where such a crazy person had come from. The truck crashed into the wall, and there was a roar. As they got closer to the truck, they saw that no one was inside. They rushed to find whoever was driving the van. Suddenly a masked man appeared, pressing a knife to his throat, and asked to throw away the weapon. It was our main character, Jason. He was trying to find out what kind of yellow-eyed devil he is to them. He also said that only the leader managed to survive the meeting with him, after which they regularly sacrifice people. A man from the Miami gang tried to appease Jason with the idea that he could spend the whole night with any girl and they would also help defeat him. Cutting his neck, Jason said something to the effect that he didn't want a man who would betray his commander. The corpse of this man lay on the ground covered in blood, most likely he wasn't lying, our hero thought. Pulling on his mask, he began to move on. Crowds of people lay on the ground covered in blood. There were sounds of grunting, pitiful moans, sounds of screams, and the remaining members attacked Jason. A battle began between them. A huge crowd of people attacked our main character. During the battle with one of them, someone attacked Jason from behind. Jason, with a quick movement of his hands, cut the attacker's throat. Another person attacked him from behind, but our main character, with a quick movement of his hands, stuck a knife into the attacker. He killed the attackers one after another, showing his superiority in the use of edged weapons. 
The attackers fell in front of him one after another, releasing rivers of blood. He left mountains of corpses behind him. Everyone was dead. Walking a little further, he was surprised by the silence. It alarmed our hero. He felt danger, but could not understand where it came from. When suddenly he felt the heat, quickly looking around, he saw something incomprehensible. Two balls of flame flew at him at great speed. Having managed to dodge, a huge explosion was heard. The fire consumed a large area. Reaching for the pistol that hung on his belt in a holster, he took it off the safety. Immediately aiming in the direction where the balls came from, he opened fire. He was shooting at some man in iron armor. The bullets seemed to bounce off him. Jason stood surprised that after firing a whole clip, the man opposite him still remained on his feet, only small drops of blood flowing down him. Having reloaded the pistol, the main character continued to fire at the man in armor, but he jumped back and hid behind the wall, after which he drank some liquid and breathed flames directly towards our hero. Jason was thrown back, but he was able to regroup and get to his feet, continuing to fire at his attacker. The masked man was still hiding behind the wall from the bullets, trying to catch his breath. While Jason was reloading the gun, he began to scream, trying to tell our main character something. Our main character listened and heard that he was asking him or whether he was a primitive hunter. He also said that he thought that he was the only survivor in this city. But this is not the case and he will have fun not only with monsters, but also with elite warriors. He told him about what powerful monsters he fought. The main character listened to the story. He was wondering who he would fight with now and where he got such power from. Jason thought about why he needed a monster and where he got such armor. Only a black monster with such powerful skin came to mind. The masked man asked Jason why he attacked them, and also after some time asked him if he was really against the actions of their organization. At this time, a group of people was already gathering below, preparing to defend their commander, discussing the fact that there was only one attacker and they could easily kill him in a crowd. They shouted that the future was in their hands and they would be able to restore the city and live in joy. They shouted that they would create an organization of hunters. They were eager to fight with great enthusiasm. The masked man was glad that help came so quickly. Jason was not embarrassed by their number because the more opponents the more panic can be created, and our main character is used to fighting with several opponents rather than with one. A crowd of people shouted that they would now surround our main character and kill him. It would be easy for them, they thought. Having run behind the pillar, they saw no one. They began to panic and scream that he was not there. When suddenly there was a noise from above them, they looked up and saw Jason, who was already aiming at them. They were surprised and scared. Screams began to be heard throughout the shopping center. While Jason was dealing with a crowd of people, a masked man tried to attack him. He shouted that he deliberately allowed them to attack so that he would be distracted, and after a few seconds he added that he died faster. Swinging the sword, a crash was heard. An entire shelf with some documents was cut with one swing, and the wind rose from the swing. With his strength, he even cut his own subordinates who stood on the other side of the rack. Screams were heard. Standing around a huge number of corpses of people, he anxiously asked where he was. He was scared when suddenly words came from behind him that he was not worthy to carry such a strong sword with him. Our main character immediately after his words began to deliver a huge number of powerful blows to the masked man. The blows were so fast that he could not even see them. Suddenly, without realizing it, he found himself upside down in the air. Jason threw the commander straight down head first. There was a roar and groans of pain. Our main character stood holding a sword in his hands, and he was surrounded by mountains of corpses. He left devastation behind him. The masked man lay on the ground and asked where he got such power, but our main character silently looked at him. He began to beg for mercy from our hero, saying that if he joins him, he will receive a high status in their group, as well as a yellow-eyed demon. But our main character just sighed. He repeated again in a whisper with a trembling voice, saying he was begging him to have mercy and not kill him. But our main character answered in a cold voice that he refused. Spatters of blood scattered to the side, even reaching the ceiling. Thanks to the victory over this group, our hero received the general's dagger, as well as firewater. Some strange screams were heard in the streets. Our hero stood in front of the subordinates of the masked man and said that the awakened ones should become their hounds, and they should also give them a quarter of the crystals they received. 
but they shouted in response that they did not agree to become their subordinates and that they still served their commander Mayim. But Scott stood and told those that they didn't seem to understand what situation they were in. They got angry. They told him that they were awakened and he was an ordinary person and that he should not look down on them. Suddenly, Jason shot an arrow. She flew straight into the eye of the awakened former deputy of the Yakuza. He fell to the ground, everyone screaming was scared by this. Holding his hand and releasing energy, Jason said that he wanted to rip off their skin, but decided to regret that from today, if they dare to kill a person or show any violence, they will be finished. They immediately agreed. They were still surprised by the strength of our main character. Jason grabbed the arrow with a quick movement of his hands, showing his superiority. Hiding the arrow, he added that they would now report everything to him every three days. They immediately agreed. After a while, he told everyone to leave. Scott stood there in a sweat. This evening, there was silence on the street. A cool breeze was blowing. It was late autumn outside. Jason, standing in front of his subordinates, said that in a few days they would go hunt the yellow-eyed demon. Everyone listened to him attentively. He showed footage of this creature. Everyone was surprised by the power of this demon. In the video, he destroyed entire buildings so easily that it was impossible to believe it. They said that they didn't even have a chance. Everyone was shocked by the power of this demon. But their commander told them that if they want to survive, they need to take risks. Everyone stood in surprise. They could not even find the words to start arguing with our main character. He also added that this time he will not go hunting alone. A few days later, they held a meeting in the building. They discussed how they sacrificed several people to this demon a few days later. Jason ordered them to gather all the people they are going hunting. Ella had to gather doctors to help the wounded. Holding the divine cup in her hands, she said that they would only use it for the especially wounded. Jason and a squad of stormtroopers will clear the main area of monsters. There was a breakthrough of monsters. The defenders of the territory began to retreat. But then Blade appeared and began to destroy one monster after another. With his power, he killed monsters with one blow, delivering crushing blows with his bat. Elsa used her rifle to deliver precise blows to the monsters, also destroying one after another. In addition to shooting, she also demonstrated the use of a bayonet knife in close combat. Everyone rejoiced, saying that these two no longer even looked like people. Their power was incredibly enormous. At this time, the screams of monsters were heard nearby. Jason stood wiping the blood of the monsters. There was a huge crowd of monsters around him. Checking his stats, he saw a significant increase in his strength. His strength was already at level 100 and his physical condition at 89. Rising to the roof, he watched. There was deathly silence, which could only portend trouble. Suddenly, our hero screamed at the top of his voice. The monster woke up, opening its eyes. Darkness rose in the air. The rumble and cracking of asphalt began to be heard from underground, and the earth began to crumble. The cars began to rise into the air like small pebbles. A yellow-eyed demon appeared from the ground. He was huge. Our main character appeared before him, ready for battle. Jason said that he resembled a vile snake. The yellow-eyed demon screamed, making creepy sounds. Compared to Jason, he was huge. He attacked our main character. But he quickly raised his pistol and began shooting towards the demon. The demon continued to approach our hero, showing his superiority and strength. As soon as our hero realized that his bullets were not taking him, he turned around and rushed in the opposite direction. He was running away from the yellow-eyed demon, but he was catching up with him, his speed exceeding the speed of a man. Screaming, he destroyed everything in his path, but our main character smiling told him what was right and for him to follow him. Jason used every means to slow the creature down, jumping on cars in the hope that its speed would be significantly reduced. But the monster didn't even notice any obstacles, moving at the same speed as on a flat road. The yellow-eyed demon approached our main character significantly. He was ready to grab him. Jason thought that he needed to push a little because he would be arriving soon. Behind him, the demon left destruction, and where he moved, there was a huge roar. At this time, stormtroopers stood on the roof holding RPGs in their hands. Everyone was surprised by the size of this colossus, because in the video it seemed much smaller than it actually is. Everyone kept saying that he was much scarier than in the video, sweat running down their faces. Jason, drawing a dagger, told the yellow-eyed demon that this place would become his grave. The stormtroopers were holding anti-tank grenade launchers in their hands. Its accuracy should definitely have been enough to eliminate this monster. 
Jason talked about how he had to lead the monster into a trap and the stormtroopers would open fire on it. The main character said that many people are not needed. Only ten experienced grenade launchers are needed. He also added that he would use magic to delay him during the stormtroopers' attack and then finish everything on his own. He said that if their plan failed, then they would forget about it and immediately retreat. The monster attacked our hero, preparing to eat him. But our hero was not afraid and immediately began to use magic to try to stop him. The yellow-eyed demon made terrible screams as it tried to eat our main character. Jason loudly said that this monster was simply surprising because such strong pressure emanated from him, and he also added that it would be very difficult for him to hold out even for a second. But then Elsa commanded fire. Everyone was awaiting this command with trepidation. All ten stormtroopers immediately opened fire on the monster. All the shots hit the target and explosions began to be heard from the hits. A few seconds later, the entire yellow-eyed demon was covered in fire. There was a huge roar from the flames and the squeals of the monster were heard. Our main character looked with trepidation towards the flame, waiting to see if his idea had come to fruition. Blade stood and said that he did not expect such power from these grenade launchers. But as soon as the flames dissipated, the yellow-eyed demon appeared completely intact, but everyone felt his anger. But suddenly blood began to flow from his head, nevertheless one charge was able to wound the monster. Everyone was surprised that he was still alive after such an attack. No one could believe it, and at that time the evil demon was already moving towards the stormtroopers. But our main character was already running towards him in order to attack. As soon as he approached the monster, he immediately attacked him with his dagger. Everyone stood and watched in awe. No one could even imagine what would happen next. Jason stood and looked at the monster, wiping the sweat. He said that the wound was superficial, but he was still able to wound him which means he could kill him. But the monster immediately attacked him. Jason barely managed to dodge it. The yellow-eyed demon continued to deliver one attack after another, but our main character dodged each attack of the monster. The monster was angry, he shouted at our main character, showing his anger. Jason, thinking that he would still have to sing, rushed into battle. Trying to attack the monster, he noticed some strange movements from the monster. When suddenly he was hit by the monster's tail, the hit went straight to the man. Jason was thrown back several times. The blow was powerful. Our hero lay on the ground. He could not even move. Everyone started screaming in alarm. The monster was still angry. He prepared to attack our hero again. He let out angry screams and then rushed towards our hero. Jason lay on the ground and couldn't even move. Everyone looked at what was happening with alarm. They couldn't even move out of fear because the monster was putting enormous pressure on them. Jason tried to get up, but the monster was already approaching him. As soon as the man stood up, the yellow-eyed demon was already right in front of him. The hero stood covered in blood, thinking that he would not have time to dodge, but he could not give up so easily. Scott and Elsa continued to anxiously shout Jason's name and for him to run away as quickly as possible. Our main character fell straight into the snake's mouth. There was a crushing roar. Thick dust rose, everyone stood stunned. Blade tried to rush towards the yellow-eyed demon, but was stopped by Elsa. He shouted for her to let him go, but in response, she told him to remember what order the Major gave. She also added that if they continued to fight him, everyone would die, and the commander ordered them to survive. But the demon still could not stop and calm down. He destroyed everything in his path. Elsa screamed that everyone was retreating and she would cover them. When Jason suddenly opened his eyes, he asked himself if he had survived. At this time, the yellow-eyed one tried to eat Elsa, but she jumped away and was able to dodge the demon's attack. Jason thought that he couldn't even move. He was wondering how the others were doing, because they had angered the demon very much. Everyone was shooting at the demon. They were shouting that they needed to retreat. Panic began to appear in their ranks. Our main character lay and felt sounds similar to a heartbeat. He lay right next to the yellow-eyed demon's heart. He looked at him in surprise thinking that this was incredible luck. Jason laughed and said that the demon would regret swallowing him. He extended his hand and began to release magic. At this time, the demon had already destroyed almost the entire city. The fighters were lying on the ground. The demon was preparing to eat them. He screamed, making terrible sounds. Everyone thought that they would all die. The yellow-eyed demon rushed towards our heroes, who tremblingly prepared to accept the monster's attack. At this time inside the monster... Our main character used his last strength to squeeze the snake's heart. Suddenly there was a crash and blue blood sprayed out. 
The demon stopped right in front of our heroes, ceasing to make any sounds. Blood flowed from his mouth. No one understood what had happened. Suddenly, the demon began to go on a rampage, spitting blood. It was as if the demon was being torn apart from the inside, they thought. He started screaming. Everyone stood and watched. No one could even imagine what was happening to him. Elsa said that they were lucky, and this was their chance to escape. When suddenly the yellow-eyed demon spat Jason out. The snake still screamed from the pain that struck him from the inside. Jason lay on the ground, bleeding. His body was all wounded. Blade stood and asked what was happening. Jason was thinking that his heart had not yet completely broken. He needed to be killed as quickly as possible while he was in a panic. The soldiers ran up to him. They were glad that their major was alive. They surrounded him and started asking him how he could survive. But Jason immediately interrupted them, telling them that they had disobeyed orders. Standing up and wiping off the blood, after a while he added that thank God they didn't leave. Now they will surround him and kill him. There were noises and screams in the streets. Everyone surrounded the monster, started firing at it, throwing grenades at it. The monster began to scream even louder. His anger consumed the air, and the cold was felt. The snake rushed towards the attackers. Everyone began to run away. At this time, our main character was already approaching him. He was also angry. He wanted to crush the huge demon with just one blow. He climbed higher and higher on the huge body of the snake. Having climbed as high as possible, he put out his dagger and jumped, trying to hit the monster right in the head. He shouted for him to die as quickly as possible. The demon understood that he would not have time to dodge the attack. Jason attacked the monster with crushing force with a dagger straight to the head. Now the cry of the yellow-eyed demon was not scary. He was screaming in pain. Blood began to splatter in different directions, covering everything in a blue-green color. Jason smiled, telling the demon not to move and to die as quickly as possible. The snake tried to throw our main character off his head, but he did not let go of the dagger, trying to plunge it even deeper. The monster hit its head directly on the building, destroying it. Jason began to lose a huge amount of blood and his whole body began to hurt. Suddenly the scream stopped and the demon froze in one place. The yellow-eyed demon fell to the ground and there was a loud crash. No one could believe in victory. There was silence. When Jason suddenly appeared, everyone started shouting about victory. Their commander was able to win. The main character, using his last strength, moved towards his comrades. He exhaled with relief and a smile appeared on his face. Blade and Elsa still stood surprised. They could not believe in victory. They ran up to Jason, who was barely able to stand on his feet, and they began to scream with joy. Blade shouted that he couldn't believe that he was able to defeat such a strong demon. After some time, all the flames died down and there was silence. Our hero stood right next to the snake. The creature was covered in blood. It was dead. Jason swung his dagger, signs of disgust visible on his face. Blood scattered in all directions, turning the next few meters blue. No one could say a word. No one had yet really come to their senses after the battle. Jason was holding a black snake magic crystal in his hands. He put it in his mouth and then swallowed it. His wounds immediately began to heal. Steam came out of them, and the wounds healed and his left eye acquired an animal appearance, and all his characteristics increased in level. Everyone stood and looked in surprise at Jason's changes. They went towards their camp. The loud hum of the engine was heard. The soldiers who remained in the camp rejoiced at the return of their commanders and were also glad of their victory. They shouted the name of their commander, saying that he was their best. Everyone was happy except Jason. He looked at the ground. Scott expressed delight in the Major's direction. Elsa also congratulated our main character on his victory. Jason walked, still absorbed in his own thoughts. Sometime later, everyone was having lunch, still discussing the powerful victory. Some of them were happy about the cola because they had not drunk this for a long time. The main army was moved to the municipal center. There was no longer any need to be outside when death did not threaten them. This place was close to the market and department store rich in goods, the priest of the Black Death was moved with the help of excavators and heavy equipment. It reminded of the times when soldiers died in the war against the Black Death. The Black Death priest was instrumental in making protective equipment. Scott, looking at the snake, said that even when he is dead, his skin is like steel. Elsa said that they dismembered him and did not find the stone. Now they are no different from ordinary killers. Scott said there was talk of building a workshop around it. He also added that he had to find someone. 
His nickname was The Whale. He talked about how when it comes to theft of cultural property or trade, there is no one better than him. He is a pro in his field. Jason asked him where the whale was. Scott showed the man's location on a map, but also added that it would not be easy. Ella said that this place where people gather means that there are a lot of monsters there, and they don't have any pills left, and the fighters haven't rested for a long time. Jason, without allowing Scott to finish, gave the order for everyone to gather, as they were moving out immediately. Elsa tried to object to the commander, saying that they did not know what was there, but Jason told her that with the help of his new strength, he felt that there would be no strong monsters there. The main character also added that they don't need a lot of people, only some Scott and Blade will go with him. He ordered them to take cartridges and pills and wait for him. Elsa had to take care of the corpses and Ella, the wounded. They looked at the commander in surprise, not quite understanding what was in his head, but they trusted him, so they agreed with his order. After some time, they were already riding in a van. The battle with the Black Death was the worst. From preparation to action, they miraculously survived. Circumstances indicate that the strength of a monster can be determined by the color of its eyes. They resemble the colors of the rainbow, and each color is much stronger than the previous one, Jason thought. He also thought that the monster he saw might not be the strongest. After a two-hour drive, they entered this settlement. There was a loud roar of hooves, which seemed to be destroying the ground beneath them. Some strange creatures, similar to pigs and elephants, ran and made overwhelming sounds. Jason immediately jumped into action, jumping out of the van. Blade and Scott were scared because this crowd of huge monsters was moving straight into the van's head. Jason's eyes took on an animalistic appearance, reminiscent of a snake. He immediately rushed into battle with the monsters. He swung his dagger, scattering the monsters in different directions. The monsters kept coming, each one seeming bigger than the last. But Jason did not retreat. He only moved further, showing his superiority over them. The monsters also did not intend to retreat. They wanted to crush the arrogant man who dared to start a battle with them. But their strength was nothing compared to the strength of our protagonist. With just one swing of his dagger, he destroyed several monsters at once. Piteous screams were heard. The cries of monsters in pain were heard for several kilometers around. Jason and Scott watched with awe and sweat on their faces as Jason cut through a huge crowd of monsters so easily. Our hero's face was stern. It seemed that some creature had taken possession of him. An hour later, there was silence. All the squeals stopped. Our hero stood around a crowd of slaughtered monsters. They entered the building that Scott had talked about. When you entered this building, you could hear delight from Blade. He said that this was still true. Scott said that he heard that the whale takes what he wants, but he didn't know that he collected so much. Blade only said that it was some kind of museum. Scott said that there was so much here that his eyes were running wild, he needed to photograph everything. Jason touched the wall with the words that there is nothing useful here, Blade asked him what it was. When suddenly our main character swung, there was a roar and a little dust rose. Scott and Blade tried to see what Jason saw there and why he destroyed the wall. The dust cleared, and in front of Jason was a huge hole in the wall, and behind it a huge room. The room was stuffed with valuables. It was a secret room. Scott couldn't believe his eyes. Jason told Scott that he was great because there are very valuable things here. He told him that they were taking everything from this room. The rest was just junk. In the room was a scroll of beauty blessings, as well as a high birth card. Braid was still surprised by the find. He told his commander that these two things were very valuable. Scott couldn't believe his eyes, because he didn't expect to find something like this. A few hours later, they returned to their domain. Everyone stood and also joyfully greeted their commander with delight. Elsa praised Blade, and Ella asked about his successes, and he in turn boasted about his finds. He pointed at the van and said that all these things were very valuable. Everyone stood and unloaded the van. No one could stop cheering. Elsa stood and talked about how glad she was to join Jason. Scott held two important finds in his hands, showing Ella and Elsa. Scott was talking about having a map of cores in his hands. Elsa couldn't believe her eyes. They were discussing how this map works. The brighter the color, the more monsters there are in that place. This map is something like a radar. Jason also added that the closer you look, the less they will see. But the further you go, the stronger you become. And he also asked Scott what the highest score of identified monsters is today. They said that if the expected color rating was confirmed, blue lights would appear. 
Blade said that the world was full of monsters stronger than the Black Death. Elsa could not believe it. Jason thought that with his current strength he could not oppose anything to more powerful monsters. People heard rumors about the boss and began to gather and move towards them, creating McClan. No one could cope. Instead, the boss allowed McClan to expand into the McGuild and create a new clan under his wing. Zero, zero. Everyone stood and said that they had already been standing for several hours and were waiting for their commander. Soon after the boss appeared, many calmed down. They were suppressed by only a small part of the major. Jason took the weapons from them, saying that negotiations would begin right away. The boss had already become an independent representative of the entire city. He could no longer simply unconditionally indulge people. Jason talked about how some of them would receive artifacts. All of them would receive weapons and ammunition. He also added that the awakened ones and the team members would enter the McClan and work. Everyone began to rejoice. People cheered, but it was not easy to meet the boss's demands. Jason said that there are not enough artifacts for everyone, so one of the conditions is one hand. Nobody understood what was going on, in the sense that everyone thought with one hand. Of course, this was a test of how we could decide to sacrifice you. No one doubted it. Some thought that Jason would seriously chop off their hand. Soon, anger and confusion gave way to fear. If a challenger received more than nine points, he was eliminated, leaving only two challengers. The woman and the man cried out in one voice that they were claiming. Jason, just in case, asked the people again which of them wanted to get weapons. He threw his dagger straight at the girl and the man. A multi-axis scream rang out. The dagger stuck into the ground with incredible force. After which he returned to Jason's hand, and he in turn said that they should leave their hand in reserve. If they break or do not follow the rules, then they will return unquestioningly. Jason told Scott that these two are joining their team. The girl and the man couldn't gather their thoughts. They were just ready to say goodbye to their hand. Some time passed. Night was falling. Jason asked Robert if he had chosen a weapon. Scott thought that these two were very well prepared. They could quickly get used to everything. Jason asked Scott when the protective gear would be ready, to which he replied that the shop manager said he could finish the prototype today. He also added that if the major approves it, then mass production will also begin from today. They moved into the workshop when suddenly Elsa screamed. Approaching the map, Elsa said that the green dot had moved. Jason said that he had not yet met such monsters, so he could not say for sure, but it was clear to him that with their current powers, it was simply impossible to fight green-eyed monsters. Also, monsters with orange eyes were approaching the city. Scott said that he thought there would be at least some kind of break, but it turned out to be the calm before the storm. But after some time, Jason thoughtfully told them that their only opportunity to get a green rating is now. He also added that there is no time. We must continue to fight and supply at the same time to increase the chances of survival. Everyone stood and listened to Jason's order. Everyone understood that there was only enough ammunition for this battle. There were two more units heading towards another city. It was necessary to transport weapons there, Jason said. Robert and Eve agreed with Jason's orders. The Major also added that there is no information about the fourth rating, that is, green-eyed, but now there is a huge probability of destroying our squad. After increasing the rating, they must deal with it as quickly as possible. Blade and Scott stood there sweating. They were a little scared because the last battle was difficult. Jason walked into the workshop. When suddenly a man shouted that they were here. The old man barely stood up. He screamed for his things to be prepared. Red Val and his team came out to Jason. Scott introduced the major, who in turn bowed and said that he was pleased to meet you. The head of the workshop, looking at Jason, was speechless for a while. Jason politely turned to Redwall and asked to show his prototype equipment, who in turn showed where they needed to follow. They entered the workshop where there were a lot of things. It was immediately clear that they spend a lot of time here. There was a uniform on the table. Everyone screamed wow in surprise. Jason looked at the mold. At this time, Redval said that about 20 molds were already ready. Thanks to the current production speed, they could produce 10 molds a day. Also, the head of the workshop showed the weapon. Jason thanked him, because now they can fight with the orange ones. Eyes of Black Death when ingested give the power of Black Death. Blades increase power. Everyone stood surprised because no one could believe that artifacts could be created with their own hands. Jason was still in his thoughts, saying that they were leaving Eve answered so precisely. 
They said goodbye to the master and his subordinates. Radval shouted good luck to the departing Jason and his team. Redwall thought that he knows why he praises him and follows him. An hour passed, everyone was preparing for battle. Elsa and Blade were guarding the entrance to the room. In this room, Jason was sitting on a seat, deep in sleep. Next to him stood an empty divine cup. He opened his eyes from the screams that were calling him. Opening his eyes, he thought about whose voice it was. Opening his eyes, he asked Ella, or if it was her and why she grew her hair. She sobbed and couldn't stop screaming his name. Jason thought that he didn't understand how much time had passed, but his body was very cold. He understood that he was dying. When he suddenly closed his eyes, Ella screamed even louder. The girl screamed for Jason to remember that he could change this. She hoped that he would help and she would tell him her desire. The guy, having opened his eyes slightly, did not understand what was going on. Suddenly he woke up covered in sweat. Holding his head, he thought that such a future was unacceptable. Leaving the room, he ordered everyone to gather. After a while, everyone gathered. They discussed the future that Jason saw. Jason spoke about the six artifacts that Ella had mentioned. Scott began to talk about some strange museum that might contain artifacts. But our main character told him that most likely these artifacts had already been stolen. But Scott said there was still a chance and they needed to check. He talked about some great tomb. But suddenly Scott screamed and grabbed his head. He screamed that he wondered who could hurt the boss so badly. Jason thought that if it was a monster, he would not have left him alive. Ella also did not participate in the battle and he died of weakness. Blade compared the current world to a video game. Our hero suggested that the number of monsters may be limited. He said that in the end it might turn out that there will be more awakened people and fewer monsters, then people will again climb to the top. Everyone listened carefully to our main character's assumptions. The roar of engines was heard. Our heroes were heading somewhere. Ava and Robert were silent, because this was their first time participating in a mission. They rode in new equipment. The equipment covered the entire body. It was comfortable to use and free to move. Everyone was talking about collecting as many remaining weapons and pills as possible. Everyone was thinking that the monsters around the city hall had not been identified. They needed to defend themselves and monitor them with a minimum number of people. Blade said that Eve and Robert would split into two teams. Blade and Elsa had to use the map to find their location and then get rid of weak monsters, while Scott and Ella remained in the mayor's office to guard the base and monitor the wounded and periodically report on the situation on the map. Jason also added that after completing their missions, they returned to the unit. As he left, he told them that they were returning alive. There was silence. Everyone looked at our main character, seeing in him their commander. As soon as Jason started to walk away, they cried out in unison to eat. There was screaming in the streets and there was a slight pressure in the air. A huge number of monsters were moving somewhere with human corpses lying around them. The monsters destroyed absolutely everything in their path. Along the way, they ate the remains of the surviving people. A larger monster was moving behind them. They looked like lizards. Among them was a huge monster, which stood out most of all for its size. The monsters made sounds similar to the cawing of crows. The orange-eyed demon looked into the distance. A crowd of monsters surrounded our main character, who was standing on the skull of some monster. Jason thought about how many of them came, but this is their territory. He laughed, saying that they would regret coming near his territory. This skull belonged to the Black Death. They deliberately blocked the entrance. Raising his hand, he gave the order for everyone to get ready. Everyone was ready. No one wanted to lose their place. The monsters outnumbered the humans many times over, but no one showed any fear when suddenly Jason screamed for them to quit. A loud sound began to be heard, and at the same time, several soldiers pulled the pin from the grenades. The soldiers began throwing grenades directly into the crowd of monsters. The monsters did not immediately understand what was happening. Suddenly, grenades began to explode and flames rose. This was followed by gunfire, and there was a strong smell of gunpowder in the air. The monsters made squeals. They were squeals of pain. The largest lizard scattered his subordinates in different directions. He was very angry. The lizard opened its mouth and flames came out of it. Even more explosions began to be heard because some grenades did not explode from the fall, and at the same time other smaller lizards began to die. The flames expanded more and more. Visibility was zero. When suddenly the monster threw the ball right at the roof on which the fighters were standing. There was a roar and dust rose. 
As soon as everything cleared up, wounded soldiers lay on the roof. The building was enveloped in fire. At this time, our main character was already approaching the monster with incredible speed. He was approaching the surviving monsters. One by one, he cut down the lizards. The monsters, noticing Jason, began to move towards him, making some strange sounds. Jason's eyes were like the eyes of a monster, and his speed was incredible for a human. On the street, there was noise. People were screaming, a monster was screaming, and the smell of gunpowder was in the air. Blade and Elsa were fighting some red monster. They fought in close combat, the huge creature holding axes in its hands. It was clear from the battle that this creature was superior in strength to our heroes. It dealt devastating blows to our heroes, forcing them to go on the defensive. They both thought that they did not understand how their boss was able to fight them, because they are incredibly strong. But suddenly Blade struck straight at the monster's leg. Elsa at the same moment began to fire at him. The creature began to scream, it became angry. But Blade did not give him a break. He dealt a crushing blow to the head. At that moment, Elsa jumped up, holding a machine gun in her hand, at the end of which there was a bayonet knife. She stabbed it straight into the monster, and even the ground collapsed from the creature's fall. Blood splashed in different directions, and there was silence. At this time, our main character continued his battle with numerous creatures. When suddenly our main character jumped, jumping over several monsters, he walked right up to their leader, Standing face to face with him, the monster immediately opened its mouth and launched a fiery ball towards Jason. But Jason immediately gathered energy in his hand. The fireball exploded before reaching our main character. The monster began to scream. There was a slight pressure in the air. Realizing that the ball did not hit the target, the monster immediately went into close combat. The lizards standing next to the leader in an instant were cut into small pieces. Jason stood in a stance. He was preparing to attack the leader. His eyes again took on an animal look. The leader of the lizard began to scream. Rushing towards Jason, he wanted to tear him apart with his claws. But our main character immediately attacked the creature with his dagger. The leader stopped, frozen in one position. Jason was able to split the monster in half with just one swing. The remaining lizards were shocked by this. They did not even move. Jason smiled and said it was time to finish. After some time, there was silence on the streets of the city. Some people were screaming from one building. A few minutes later, the screams stopped, and a huge number of corpses lay on the ground. In front of our main character stood a man holding a pistol, who shouted that he did not understand how Jason could do this. Jason, looking away, said that he was just passing by. The man opposite, in turn, did not stop screaming. Jason told him that who of them was still crazy. Dozens of bodies of women in the basement that died due to horror and harsh treatment. But he also said that he was not here for this but he could not get past it. He shouted that Jason was a bastard and that he should shut up, but Jason continued to say that the world is filled with monsters and they are the ones who should not be among them. Jason also said that he saw five shots, and if he cannot determine the weight of the weapon, then he should at least take into account the distance. The man opposite did not understand what our main character was talking about. Having tried to shoot, nothing happened. The pistol was unloaded, then he decided to throw it towards our hero, but it was unsuccessful. The man talked about not letting Jason piss him off, since he is also awakened and has powers. He started shouting for our protagonist to watch carefully. He began to use his power, lifting all the objects in the room into the air. But Jason gathered a small part of his strength into his hand and swung it. When suddenly the man began to fall, he did not understand what was happening. A second later, he was already lying on the ground and could not even move, and all the objects that had recently been in the air were already lying on the floor. He asked our hero where he got such incredible strength. Three days ago, the battle between the second and third levels of monsters ended. Everything went better than our heroes expected. There were no fatalities. The injuries were minor. All the wounded will soon recover. Everyone was happy about the new ammunition they had discovered. Jason praised his subordinates and also said that he was very glad that everyone was alive. When Scott suddenly shouted that the boss must see this, he pointed to a location not far from their city. It had recently disappeared. Everyone was surprised that there was no green one nearby. They were discussing the fact that either the monster had become invisible or he was very quickly out of range of the map when suddenly Jason interrupted them, saying that someone was hunting him and was able to kill him. The others replied that this was impossible. Jason, interrupting them, 
said that perhaps the person who killed the green-eyed man would kill him in the future. He reassured his subordinates, saying that this was not the time for talking. Now he was going to this city alone. He also gave orders that the main goal was reconnaissance. They also had to strengthen the defense and provide escape routes in case of an unforeseen event. Jason asked this man what he knew about the green-eyed monster and what happened three days ago. He said that ten military men entered the city. They looked like special forces. It was late in the evening. Jason asked him what happened next, to which he replied that after the special forces arrived, the monsters began to move and their number decreased significantly. Jason was thinking that the target of the special forces was clearly not the organization. At that time, one of the broken legs rose into the air. She approached right to the back of our main character's head. The man lying on the ground was smiling. With incredible speed, this piece of debris began to approach the back of our hero's head. But our hero quickly reacted and caught him with his hand. Holding it in his hand, he looked at the man with contempt. Having broken it, he asked him what it was, but he could not even utter a word. When suddenly the man stood up and started running towards our main character. After some time, there was total silence. Our hero left the building, breathing heavily. As he walked, he was thinking about something. This guy was lying in the building. There was a piece of debris in the back of his head. He was dead. Walking down the street, the major noticed something in the building. Approaching a building, he tried to see something. Once inside, he moved further and further. It was a subway. Some of the lamps survived. Jason thought that he didn't feel anything. So most likely, there were no monsters here. But some kind of anxiety did not leave him. He thought that there was some kind of pressure in the air. It was the smell of blood. Walking further and further, he looked around. When suddenly he stopped in front of a huge number of corpses, there was a stench in the air. Looking at them, Jason thought that these were mostly trained soldiers from the anti-terrorist unit. He looked at their characteristics and thought about who could kill them all. Their initial characteristics surprised our main character. All acquired skills were the same. He thought about artifacts and weapons. When he saw the PZF-3, he was surprised because an anti-tank grenade launcher should not be in such a place. Jason discovered a spear of ancient warriors. The level of the artifact was level four. He looked and thought that this artifact was disposable, but when two weapons were combined, the destructive power doubled. Even to a level four monster, it would cause significant damage. Suddenly, Jason felt a feeling like when he first met that huge monster, he rushed towards him. When suddenly he stopped abruptly, his face was scared. In front of him lay a huge green-eyed monster. Sweat was running down his face, because the characteristics of this monster far exceeded those of anyone he had fought before. He went back. Our main character's strength was already 215. Night rained outside. A cool breeze was blowing. Surprise screams were heard in the corridor in the city hall. No one could believe that the green-eyed monster was dead, because who could have done this? They discussed the fact that they had a rather strong competitor. They also discussed that in addition to their map, there was most likely another one. Suddenly, Jason received a text message on his phone saying that he would meet at the airport on March 3rd. Everyone reacted to this as violently as possible. Eve asked Jason or he would go to the airport. Robert said that the choice was simple, to meet or refuse. He also asked the major whether he would negotiate to which our hero replied that he should avoid meeting with them. Scott was sweating, talking about how no matter how they looked at it, there were a lot more of them. He thought it would be nice to negotiate. Everyone said that most likely they did not need negotiations because they had no reason to accept them. Blade tried to make a joke to lighten the situation. Jason, interrupting everyone, said that they still have time to prepare. Now they must do everything in their power. He also ordered that all the soldiers be gathered. Night still rained outside. A strong wind began to rise. The weather worsened as if it was warning of an impending house. Monsters also ruled in China. There were a huge number of them. Red monsters eclipsed the street, their bodies completely covered in fur. In front of them stood some people in ancient Chinese attire. One of the girls said that she didn't really want to perform first. But the man with a cold face told her to stop talking stupidly. They are here to liberate Chinese land, not destroy it. She answered him that these were just thoughts. The girl began to play some kind of melody. Her body began to glow, and the energy was superimposed on the rest of the fighters. The fighters began to glow and become covered in some kind of light energy. General Haru ordered to move forward. 
As soon as he shouted to attack, everyone rushed into battle. The fighters seemed to be floating through the air, and their movements were unlike human ones. A rumble began to be heard and a strong wind rose. At this time, our heroes were all at work. Ella supervised the doctors. She was covered in sweat because there were a lot of sick people. She looked out the window and saw that the wounded and sick soldiers were arriving one after another. The survivors helped the wounded walk, and screams were heard. At this time, Scott and Jason stood discussing what is most difficult for ordinary fighters now. Jason talked about holding on, thinking about the future and Ella. After the appearance of monsters, the deserted city quickly began to collapse. Communication was immediately paralyzed, and electricity stopped supplying. A crowd of people immigrated to another city. However, it is not so easy to end the people themselves, and many of them began to look for ways to solve the problems that had arisen. Engineers set up the production of solar panels and began to generate electricity using them. Every effort was made to prepare the militia. With the help of search teams, the food problem was solved. Scott turned to our hero, saying that more and more people were arriving. In such conditions, he thought that it was probably worth thinking about the control system first. He said that they could call it whatever they wanted. He didn't care. And thus the guild slowly gained strength, strengthening humanity's ability to survive. Once again, we are transferred to the room. Jason was sitting on a chair. The divine thicket was empty. The city was in ruins. Jason was in great pain. His whole body was covered in wounds and blood. He could not even utter a word. He looked at the ground. His hand lay on the ground and some people stood near it. Jason thought about who they were. They in turn praised our main character because he is a famous dragon hunter. Jason thought about the fact that they spoke Chinese. He needed to learn it. Suddenly, from behind him, he felt someone approaching. A man in a raincoat stood behind him. Having only had time to look at him, he saw a blade approaching him. He pierced our main character right from behind. This man said that it was amazing because this was a defeat for our hero. He asked Jason whether he was able to feel something, but our hero only spat blood. He asked Jason if he had something to say. Jason, in turn, thought that he could no longer hold on because he had pierced his heart. He thought that he needed to remember that there were six snakes here. The sword pierced our protagonist further and further, blood flowing down the sword. When suddenly he pulled out a sword, our hero began to fall. Kneeling down, he tried to remember as much information as possible. The man standing in front of him asked him what he was muttering. Was he really making some kind of covenant? The man in the cloak said, laughing. The girls shouted at him to finish with him quickly, or they would do it. Smiling, he swung, he told him that he needed to finish quickly because the girls were already acting up. The sky was covered with small clouds that blocked the rays of the sun. The man shouted goodbye. Jason woke up covered in sweat. His breathing was ragged. His face was covered in sweat. His body was trembling. Holding his hand, he said that it was so good that it was in place. He thought about the fact that there were three days left before what was happening in the dream. Scott said that if in the future his nickname was Dragon Hunters, then he was finished. But how did he manage to lose in battle then, the guy wondered. Robert said that we need to go to the airport, because there might be a clue there. Jason asked Scott if he could recognize the man by the sword. Scott, seeing the sword, was surprised and began to talk about it. The Major was saying that nothing was known yet, but if they managed to find at least some clue, that would be good, when suddenly Blade burst in screaming. Ella asked what happened to him. Blade boasted that he had finally managed to defeat a level two monster on his own. He laughed, boasting everyone stood in a stupor because they thought that someone was attacking. Jason smiled. Ella held her head, thinking Blade was stupid. Everyone started praising the guy with the bat, and Jason started to walk away. The red-haired girl looked at the departing commander, wondering what Jason was thinking. As the man left, he replayed a situation from the future in his head. It was March 3rd, and it was snowing at the International Airport. Footsteps were heard at the airport. There were both whole planes and destroyed ones. The atmosphere was terrible, because just recently all these planes were transporting thousands of people, but now they are standing motionless. Some group got out of the truck and moved slowly. Several Special Forces soldiers returned from the mission. They walked with their heads held high. It was clear from their faces that the mission had ended successfully. They had new machine guns in their hands. The group of people was happy. Shouts began to be heard in the building that Team D was in place. After some time, everyone lined up and one of the commanders shouted that the group was in combat readiness. 
The commander stood and discussed their successes. They said that they could not even reach the orange level. They also said that there had been no news from Group C for a long time. Suddenly, the man shouted at attention. Two men stood in front of them. One of them was Lieutenant Colonel Albert. Everyone saluted to greet their Lieutenant Colonel. All the lights turned on and the room began to glow brightly. He shouted freely and then added that he would now describe the current situation. The man standing next to the lieutenant colonel said that Major Ricky had not yet attended a single meeting. The fighters discussed among themselves that the major could not be defeated. This option was possible only if he did not encounter something more serious than the blue level. When suddenly a man standing next to the lieutenant colonel shouted for everyone to shut up. The lieutenant colonel said that they could simply have lost their way, but they are setting themselves up very badly by staying here for so long. When suddenly a sound was heard, everyone began to turn around. Lieutenant Colonel Albert narrowed his eyes. Everyone became wary. They began to raise their machine guns. They took them off the safety. They were preparing for battle. In a few seconds, they surrounded the lieutenant colonel, trying to protect him from danger. They said that the lieutenant colonel should not expose himself. Intelligence reported that there was only one man standing. This was our main character. He covered his face with a hood. Suddenly, everyone rushed. They shouted that they needed to check everything. A command came from one of the commanders that one must approach carefully. Coming closer, they aimed at our hero, telling him not to make sudden movements. Otherwise, they would open fire to kill. The lieutenant colonel was informed that there was a young guy standing there, as he said. His name was Jason, and he also added that this guy wanted to talk to the main one. The lieutenant colonel immediately asked the soldier his name, to which he answered Jason. Albert immediately remembered that cold face. After some time, there was silence. All the fighters stood and watched with interest. Lieutenant Colonel Albert stood directly in front of our protagonist. He told our hero that he couldn't believe that Major Jason survived, and after a while he added, although yes, how could such a fighter die? Jason stood and looked at him with a cold gaze. Everyone stood and thought that the conversation was going on for too long. They did not understand how the Lieutenant Colonel knew him. One of the soldiers suggested that he was most likely from the military, but due to his age, he was unlikely to be a senior officer. Jason suggested that he resolve everything through peaceful negotiations, to which Albert replied that he had no right to decide this on his own, and that it was not within his competence to cooperate with non-governmental organizations. He also added that his army would not be able to fight with his fighters because they are much more experienced and have more weapons. Jason silently began to remove the glove from his hand, the Major, showing the mark on his hand, said that if a battle broke out, then half of the fighters would definitely stay here forever. Sweat was running down the old man's face. He was thinking about whether he really intended to fight alone against an entire army. Although no, if we remember his past achievements, then anything is possible. A man was walking from behind Jason. It was Major Ricky. He walked leisurely, finishing his cigarette. Turning around, Jason saw Major Ricky. All the fighters began to rejoice at the return of the Major. Ricky apologized to the Lieutenant Colonel for being late. Smiling, he saluted, greeting his commander. Suddenly it dawned on our main character that this voice reminded him of such a person. After some time, the Major reported everything completely to the Lieutenant Colonel. After the report, he asked Albert who it was and why this crowd was watching like it was some kind of performance. But without allowing Albert to answer... Ricky added that he assumed that this man was asking for cooperation in order to continue ruling in his town. When suddenly the lieutenant colonel said duel with fists, five minutes later Jason and Ricky were left standing alone preparing to fight. Everyone watched what was happening. There was silence. Major Ricky told Jason that he was interested in the skills of a fighter who served in the Secret Service. Looking at our hero from above, he said that he would die anyway. Ricky tossed the coin, and as soon as it landed, the fight began. They suddenly struck each other in turns. None of them were going to give in, defending themselves and then going on the attack. Their blows were devastating, and they both showed skill in close combat. The blows were so powerful that snow rose around them. Jason didn't want to give in because cooperation was at stake, and Ricky also couldn't lose because it would be a shame in front of his comrades. The sounds of the impacts echoed several meters around. The fighters stood and said that they were not people. They couldn't believe that anyone could fight on equal terms with Major Ricky. They talked about how Major couldn't lose, because he had the nickname Rodmaker, 
They said that he alone could cope with a yellow level threat, and if he had a team with him, then even a blue one. But the lieutenant colonel interrupted them, saying that their major was now fighting with Major Jason. He was the only survivor of those who were called ghosts. He also added that legends were made about them even among senior management, but only a small circle of people knew about its existence. And they were used only in those operations that required something that ordinary people are incapable of, and at the same time, only one combat unit could be used without wide publicity. After some time, the lieutenant colonel also said that he saw Jason in the case, and it is still hard for him to remember this. At this time, the fight between Jason and Ricky continued. Ricky began to get angry because he could not land a single direct blow. Suddenly, Jason, seeing that the enemy had opened up, struck him. After that, he began to twist his arm, delivering several more blows. But he broke free, trying to push Jason back. There was blood coming from his mouth. Raising his leg, he tried to deliver a crushing blow to our protagonist. But he dodged and kicked him. There was a crash. Jason continued to hit the Major, and after a few seconds, he found himself on the ground. Heavy snow began to fall. No one could believe that Major could lose. They watched the battle with open mouths, trying to support their commander. As soon as the snow settled, Major Ricky lay on the ground, and I stood next to our main character. After some time, the soldiers had already surrounded their commander. They said that there was no threat to life. The lieutenant colonel talked about situations happening nearby. He said that now out of 31 bridges, only two remained. The rest were blown up. Jason asked Albert about the status of the VIP, to which he replied that they care about his safety. Our hero thought that the lieutenant colonel was lying. They could not protect the president, and now they were only indulging their ambition. But this could make things even worse. Jason said that they would fight the monsters and use their powers to destroy them, and Albert said that they would help in cooperation. Handing the tokens to the old man, our hero said that he found them in an underground tunnel. They dispersed. The soldiers of the lieutenant colonel's detachment returned to the building. The lieutenant colonel thought that he suspected that Major Ricky would not be able to cope with Jason, yet it was still difficult to imagine him losing. He also thought that his psyche was most likely broken, because he had distinguished himself in so many hot spots. The lieutenant colonel squeezed the dog tags tighter and tighter. Our hero walked and thought about the battle with Major Ricky. He thought that he could not be broken. Albert ordered his men to keep an eye on Jason, but he also added that they should be careful, since he was able to deal with Major Ricky quite easily. When Jason returned back, he was already being followed by the lieutenant colonel's subordinates. When suddenly he appeared right in front of them, they were stunned by this turn of events. They could not understand how this happened, because literally just now he was walking from below. They tried to attack him, but Jason was already gathering energy in his hand. He directed energy towards the fighters. The masked people were afraid to move, because they knew nothing about the Major's strength. Suddenly their body began to tremble, they could not even move a finger. Jason told them that he had no intention of killing them. They asked him what he wanted from them then, to which Jason replied that he wanted them to always remain in his sight for a crescent. Suddenly his face changed. After a couple of seconds of silence, he added that there was another option to send their bodies to the lieutenant colonel. The girl's name was Sergeant Julie, and the man's name was Sergeant Brad. Our heroes happily greeted their commander. The main character said that the status of the president and prime minister is vague. He also added that he wanted to kill Major Ricky but decided not to do it for now in order to use the lieutenant colonel in the future. Scott said that thanks to the lieutenant colonel, they will be able to carry out tasks from the government, thereby receiving rewards in the form of artifacts. Jason also added that artifacts are now worth more than any firearm. He also talked about how they won't beg or buy them. They need to make sure they give them to them. Julie and Brad couldn't believe their eyes. After all, they made a protective wall and periodically combed the perimeter behind it. Solar panels were installed inside and work was organized to cut up monsters. The ruins of buildings were cleared and roads were restored. The people who were here enjoyed life, and the military, of course, did the same, but everything there was more likely based on forced labor. After some time, our heroes again went on a cleanup mission. Sergeant Julie showed good skills in destroying monsters. Sergeant Brad also destroyed one monster after another. The blade showed higher skills, destroying several monsters in one swing. Elsa did not lag behind him, firing at the creatures. 
Spiders that came close enough were destroyed with a bayonet. Eve also destroyed monsters. Robert covered for her. Suddenly it became difficult to breathe. They heard some screams and turned around. It was a huge spider, their leader. He made very creepy screams, showing his advantage over the others. Julie and Brad began to tremble because the orange level stood in front of them. Walking leisurely, Jason shouted about why they were marking time in one place, because this was completely different from what they had to deal with before. He walked straight towards the leader of the spiders. Our heroes began to ask whether our main character could kill six yellow-eyed monsters at once. The newcomers listened in surprise to their arguments. The monster rushed towards our main character. He, having begun to use the power of Black Death, also rushed towards the spider. There was a roar and dust rose. On the 18th of March, there was a new meeting with the lieutenant colonel, at which Scott expressed his desires. A small argument arose, but the lieutenant colonel shut up his subordinate. After they agreed, our heroes began to leave. The snipers asked the lieutenant colonel for orders. Jason felt that they were being targeted. He told the lieutenant colonel the exact coordinates of their location, and also added that if even one shot was fired, everyone would die, and also the next time the meeting should take place without them. Julie and Brad were shocked by what they heard, because the next mission could be the last for Jason's entire squad. Julie and Brad asked the lieutenant colonel about what was happening in Jason's team. Albert could not believe the words of his sergeants. After all, it is very difficult to deal with a yellow-level monster so quickly. A crisis always brings opportunity. Even if I manage to achieve one small success, it can greatly affect my reputation during a period of instability, Albert thought. He ordered his sergeants to continue monitoring Jason and his team. At this time, our heroes were driving and discussing some important person. Scott asked our main character about what kind of girl she is, that she is so important to national defense, this Katie, to which the man replied that she was the daughter of Ambassador Douglas. Scott only joked in response, saying that they had now become messengers. Jason remembered the words of the lieutenant colonel who said that he had changed a lot, exhaling heavily. He thought that he had to change much more. Having reached their destination, our main character decided to explore the city from above. He climbed one of the tallest buildings. He watched what was happening in the city, trying to understand how things were here. At this time, a crowd of monsters was trying to break through somewhere. Julie fell into a trap with monsters and had to fight. As soon as the girl wanted to leave, she noticed one strange monster behind her who was looking at her intently. Taking a closer look, the girl realized that there was an orange level in front of her. As soon as the girl moved, the monster immediately rushed towards her, trying to attack. Suddenly, she heard the words of Jason, who said that when you have decided on a goal, you need to move. He grabbed the monster with his bare hand and then lifted it up. Swinging, he threw it with incredible speed. Incomprehensible screams and cries of pain began to be heard. The monster kept flying and flying, hitting the ground. Jason told the girl not to stand, but to follow him. A little earlier, Jason said that only one sergeant should go with him to help him. After some time of silence, he explained that the lieutenant colonel has only two people whom he trusts here, and these are sergeants. So one goes with him, the other stays here. Everyone stared at our protagonist, listening carefully to his plan. Having told about the plan, everyone agreed with it. No one had even the slightest doubt, because they believed in their commander. After Jason destroyed the orange level, the monsters fell silent. The girl and the man were watching a group of people who were making quite loud screams. The girl did not understand why civilians, that is, women and even children, were attacking the fighters. Even women and children fought with the fighters, who in turn did not allow them to cross. Civilians shouted that the fighters lacked weapons, so victory would be theirs. The sounds of gunfire began to be heard, and the smell of gunpowder began to rise into the air. Julie stood and said all her thoughts out loud. It was about the fact that on the one hand, there are children. Are they really going to use them as suicide bombers? Our main character said that in most cases, children under 10 years of age are used for terrorist acts, because after 13, there is too high a chance that they will begin to reason. He also added that he could handle two tanks on his own. The girl was surprised by this. Our heroes rushed into battle. Their speed was much higher than human speed. Julie immediately began to show her superiority over the other terrorists. She destroyed them one by one without even giving a second to think. At this time, a loud hum was heard behind them, as well as the sounds of caterpillars breaking the asphalt. 
The civilians stood in shock, and in response, the soldiers stood and laughed because they felt that victory was theirs. Julie still couldn't believe her words because how could there be tanks here? In front of the tanks stood our main character, who walked straight towards them without showing even the slightest fear. Jason talked about how he didn't have time for people like them, while the team in the tank discussed how the man in front of them was crazy. Seeing an incomprehensible glow in his hand, they immediately attacked the man. Our hero also responded with a salvo of his own attack. There was a loud explosion and dust rose into the air. A few seconds later, both tanks were on fire. Julie and the others were surprised by this turn of events, because no one could even guess that an ordinary person could withstand two tanks. Jason immediately rushed to attack, drawing his katana. Everyone was surprised by the speed of the man's movement. Taking a deep breath, he said that this was the end of them he swung. A few seconds later, the barrel of the tank was cut into two parts. There was silence. Only the crackling of the fire could be heard. The tank stood completely cut into two parts. Crowds of people lay around. Julie still could not understand what had happened. The other people also stood in shock. They could not move. Jason held a man by the neck. He told him that he didn't know anything. He was just following orders. The man begged our hero for mercy. The sun was leaving. Darkness gradually came. People stood and looked at our heroes, discussing whether the army had really come for them. They also talked about how these two were much stronger than anyone they had seen before. Jason, looking at the priest, asked him if he was in charge. To which the priest introduced himself. His name was June. Jason immediately apologized and got down to business. He was interested in the information. June extended his hand, showing where to follow. Jason saw the saint's cross. His sure as a relic was the third. After some time, our heroes entered the building. The priest began a story about a green-eyed devil who controls their city. He is about 10 meters tall and is always followed by a crowd of smaller monsters. He has killed many people, including a bunch of military men. Julie asked why no one was attacking this area, to which the priest replied that he thought they were protected by God, but this is not so. He also added that one of the soldiers survived and is able to speak. Jason thought about how this cross was keeping monsters away from the area. They went to the surviving soldier. When they arrived, they were shocked by what they saw. Because of all the limbs of the fighter, only one arm remained intact. The man introduced himself and also said that he began the task on January 22nd. He said that their mission was to rescue the families of ambassadors from various countries, including the United States, as well as to search for recruits. He also added that there was a traitor in their ranks. He extended his hand, holding some kind of figurine in his hand. He asked him to take it. Julie took it and looked at her with a surprised face. The fighter, in turn, said that he should at least prevent the traitor from leaving and at least somehow take revenge for the death of his friends. He handed Julie a clay figurine of a horseman. The level of the relic was the second. After some time, our hero stood on the roof and talked. Julie said that the lieutenant colonel gave them two tasks, spying on Major Jason, as well as returning relics lost during an unsuccessful operation. Naturally, the girl added that the second mission was a priority. Jason drinking coffee, asked her if she really thinks she can take something away from him, to which the girl replied that she understands perfectly well what kind of person he is, and therefore only wanted to ask for cooperation. Julie said that she wanted to find the traitor and punish her, she was ready to completely follow the Major's orders. Jason told her that he heard her. The girl looked at our main character and smiled. Morning came, the cool morning breeze was felt. Suddenly, screams began to be heard. The man stood and shouted about how ordinary people could win against a tank. He was very angry. He thought that if his army came to them, it would be the end for them. He recalled how they told him not to let him down. Cold sweat ran down his face and his body began to tremble. The man thought that they needed the cross that the priest always carries with him. There was a roar. It was an explosion. The wall shattered into small pieces. The man screamed when he saw our main character. Jason stood with his head held high and said that the situation was familiar. Why were they standing? Let them open fire. People around began to scream and rush toward the hero, but he immediately used his power. He lifted people into the air. And then with incredible force, he threw them in different directions. There was silence. Only slight wheezing from pain could be heard. Jason suggested starting a conversation. He immediately in turn said that he did not know what kind of person gave him the weapon. 
He also added that he said that government troops would arrive soon, in any case. In such a situation, our brother has nothing to hope for. He asked to spare our protagonist, but Jason in turn said that he only deserved death. There was a crack of bones as Jason threw the man's dead body to the ground. Our hero stood thoughtfully on the roof and watched into the distance. He thought about the fact that the eight snakes were leaving outside. There was a possibility that behind all this, there was the manipulation of the high-altitude ones. Jason reminisced about his death and his fight with Mayor Ricky. Behind him stood Sergeant Julie, who was watching him. The Major felt her gaze. He called her. She immediately came down from the roof. He ordered her to be sent to headquarters and announce a general gathering. The screams of a horse could be heard as well as the clatter of hooves. Jason was fighting with someone, attacking with powerful blows. The mud rose higher and higher with each blow. In front of our main character stood a horse with a rider who was holding a spear in his hands. It was a figurine. Two fighters looked at each other, waiting for who would strike first. The rider was the first to rush into battle. The roar of hooves became even louder. After some time, the battle was over. The Major stood and thought that thanks to that paratrooper, he had taken possession of a good weapon. Of all the relics, the national treasures are the clay figurine of a horseman and the golden crown. The location of the latter is unknown, and therefore the possibility that it was returned cannot be ruled out, the man thought. The priest and his people stood shocked. A loud stomp was heard. A large army was heading straight towards them. Elsa was in the lead, followed by our heroes. At this time, our hero was already waiting for them, who looked at them intently, smiling a little because he was glad to see them all. Elsa immediately began to report on the arrival. 700 people arrived. 134 of them were hunters. The priest began to pray, saying that the Lord would really help them. Jason ordered them to gather in the meeting room. Having placed the map, he showed where the fourth level was. He said that there was their first level nest with about five dozen creatures, six hunters, and ten soldiers. As soon as the smoke cleared, they were supposed to destroy everyone who appeared. The monsters died one after another, emitting the same incomprehensible screams. Behind them stood larger monsters. Their level was much higher. These were three second-level monsters. Blade and Julie should have dealt with them. Blade, with a few swings of his new bat, dealt colossal blows to the monster. Julie also kept up with him, destroying one. Robert beat the latter, proving that he is also part of our protagonist's main team. In another area, there were 50 first level, as well as two second. Elsa took over them, destroying them one by one. Eva helped her, also demonstrating high skill in using weapons. Brad provided cover, delivering numerous attacks from a machine gun. Near the park, there was one third and three second, as well as more than a hundred first. Major Jason went there on his own. He called on the rider who was eager to fight on his own. The Major spoke with him. Orange looked at our hero as well as the rider, not understanding why the man was smiling. He, in turn, told the rider to have fun from the heart, although this fun would not last long. The monsters rushed to attack, screaming and screaming. The rider also went into battle, the horse striking with its hooves. One after another, in an instant, the monsters flew away from the rider. They could not even touch him. He dealt powerful blows with his spear, and gusts of wind scattered the monsters several meters around. Those that came under direct attack were divided into two parts, that is, in half. The rider moved further and further, destroying more and more monsters. The monsters couldn't even scratch the rider. Our main character rushed into battle after him, jumping over most of the monsters and going straight to the third level. The monster tried to block the blow, but he did not feel it. He was surprised. A second later, he was chopped into small pieces. Suddenly, he felt someone approaching from behind. Behind him stood the third level, which was already collecting energy to attack our hero. But the man immediately began collecting energy and also attacked the monster. There was an explosion. Jason's attack was much more powerful, so the monster took the blow. Orange got angry, he shouted, but the major was already rushing towards him to kill him. With one swing of his sword, he cut it in two. The man looked at the ground and the monster coughed up blood. By this time, the rider had already dealt with the rest of the monsters. His horse rose on its hind hooves and rejoiced. At this time, joyful cries were heard in the central part. People were happy that there were no more monsters and they had no one to fear. Our heroes stood on the roof and watched the joyful citizens. They discussed the fact that this was now their area. Jason was thinking that now it was the turn of the place where that bastard was. 
Sometime later, Major Jason, Sergeant Brad, and Julie met with Lieutenant Colonel Albert. The Lieutenant Colonel said that in short, they stole a map of the high mountains without knowing the situation. They put soldiers with a bunch of relics in mortal danger, and all this to hide a national treasure. Julie, in turn, said that all the time in the way they did this, of course, there are certain political subtleties and guesswork associated with this. But the presence of a traitor is obvious, as evidenced by the testimony of the junior sergeant. Albert was thinking about getting rid of the rescue team. They used it. Was it really a major general? He also thought that one of the main tasks of the gendarmerie is to protect VIPs. His head was pounding, but the lieutenant colonel could not shake these thoughts from himself. At this time, it was day outside, and the sounds of engines were heard. A whole detachment came for the lieutenant colonel. They still could not stop discussing this situation. Albert began to drive away. The sergeants looked at the leaving squad. Jason immediately turned away. Sitting in the car, the lieutenant colonel continued to reason. Jason thought that once the situation improved, and it became possible to import gas from abroad, this plant would become very important. So from this moment of the capture of this region, the Emek Guild ceased to be just a dangerous armed group. It became a threat. Screams were heard from the headquarters about how he could leave the traitor alone. The man told the lieutenant colonel that if the lieutenant colonel did not know about the traitor, then he might have accomplices. He also added that things are tight in the army now. Just one small suspicion is enough for you to immediately lose your shoulder straps. The joyful cries of children playing with a ball could be heard on the street. Albert continued to leave Jason, and the memories did not leave him. Night fell, darkness reigned in the tower on the mountain, the air seemed heavy. The king's stone shone red, and armed men surrounded it. Two men stood in the tower and watched what was happening. The major general spoke about some problem in the region, to which the colonel answered him that this trouble would not become a serious problem. They were discussing the guild of our main character, but suddenly the colonel said that in extreme cases they could set monsters from another region, so there was no problem with that. They also discussed the fact that now it would be impossible to enter this region even with a tank. The major general was lost in thought. The colonel looked at him and could not understand what the general was thinking about. He asked the colonel what was happening with the 8th Division, to which he replied that right now it was being replenished with new personnel on the front line. The colonel replied that the conditions for cooperation were unacceptable. Time was needed. Suddenly a man came to them. It was Major Ricky. They asked him why he suddenly came to them. To which he handed them the letter. There was a grin on his face. At this time, a boat was moving through the water. Suddenly he stopped, and a man in a diving suit approached the edge of the boat. He jumped into the water and then began to swim. Blade said that there should be no one at the bottom of the sea. Going there alone is still dangerous. Elsa said that John was created as a result of the drainage and connection of three islands as a consequence, so the exact situation from the relics is impossible to establish. In addition, the bridge is now destroyed. Scott suggested simply blowing it up, to which Eve immediately said that if there was no bridge, it would not be easy for the survivors to get out of there, and besides, they had no evidence that he could not swim. Jason said his final decision. It was that a hundred people who had awakened would set up an ambush in front of the bridge. The two of you would do this. If within four days the monster did not disappear from the map, he ordered Julie and Brad to leave. Swimming to the shore, he untwisted one of the blankets. PSG-1 was wrapped in it. Our main character, Major Jason, was in a diving suit, thinking that he was starting to eliminate the target. At this time, monsters reigned in the city. There was a huge crowd of them. The screams could be heard for several kilometers around. They destroyed everything in their path, moving forward and destroying more and more. Behind the entire crowd of monsters, there was also a leader. His size was much larger than the rest, and his eyes were bright green. Our main character was already sitting on the roof, aiming at the monsters. He thought that at such a distance he didn't really need to aim, but he had to put his energy into the bullet and he fired. The shot hit several goblins at once. The bullet flew with incredible speed and even broke through the wall. The monsters looked around. They did not understand what it was now. The green-eyed monster watched. He also looked around. Jason thought that the main thing now is that the animals feel fear. He moved at incredible speed along the roofs of buildings. When suddenly the green-eyed man screamed, he began to make screams similar to the screams of convocation. 
The smaller goblins also began to scream, making similar screams. When suddenly the green-eyed man hit the ground with his fist, killing several of his charges, after which he began to destroy everything around, also striking monsters. He devoured several, the animals were shocked by this. With one of his blows, he broke the building in half. Suddenly a rider appeared who was watching what was happening. The green-eyed one immediately rushed towards him. The rider raised his spear and prepared to attack. The huge goblin was many times larger than the rider and horse. Our main character was aiming at the leader. He wanted to try to kill him with a rifle. There was a roar. Dust rose from the impact of the wave and nearby buildings collapsed. A fight ensued between the rider and the green-eyed one. On the roof, our main character also fired at the monsters, as well as at the leader. But the monster managed to dodge the bullets. The rider dealt a minor blow to the monster. He turned his horse and prepared to defend himself. At this time, Jason did not stop firing at the monsters. The man was able to hit the monster, hitting him right in the head, and he in turn began to scream. The battle between our heroes and the green-eyed monsters did not stop. The leader was struck several times, but he did not retreat. The major continued to fire at a distance. The bullets distracted the green-eyed man, and at that time the rider struck with a spear. It seemed that the fight between the rider and the goblin was going to attrition, both of them had no intention of retreating. The leader continued to make incomprehensible sounds and screams as if he was trying to say something, when suddenly he angrily screamed even louder and rushed into battle. Even the ground broke from his jerk and the rider also went on the offensive. The monster jumped up trying to deliver a colossal blow, but at this time Jason was already right above him. He was holding his katana in his hands. He was approaching the monster with incredible speed. Jason said that the monster didn't have enough people and monsters in the area, and he even ate his brothers. What a creature. He plunged his katana straight into his head. There was a roar, and the asphalt broke from the monster's fall. At this time, the screams of soldiers were heard on the bridge. They occupied the entire bridge and awaited the attack. Conversations were heard between the fighters about what was happening now, because the monster had not disappeared yet. Julie was talking about whether everything would be all right. There was not only green, but also fifty orange and more than a hundred red ones. When suddenly she screamed that even a green monster could not cope with an experienced awakened one. She asked Elsa what the chances were that Jason would win, to which she remained silent. When suddenly she said that she of her own free will joined the detachment of our main character and all she could do was believe in him, the others agreed with her. She also added that what infuriates her the most is that all she can do now is wait. At this time, there was thick dust at the epicenter of the battle. Jason thought that there was no way to break the bones, but the sword went in well when suddenly he noticed that the monster was attacking. Our hero immediately dodged the blow. Let's leave the sword in the goblin's head. He jumped back a few meters. The leader stood looking at the ground in confusion. The goblin had blood all over his face and Jason looked at him with a smile. At this time, the action of the figurine was already completed. The Major said that he had no plans to fight him to the death, but it seems he has no other choice. He picked up stones and cobblestones, and then with his strength he sent the monster towards him. Their speed was incredibly fast. All the attacks hit the target. The monster could only defend himself. Suddenly he rushed towards Jason and attacked him, but he managed to dodge. Our main character did not even think of retreating, so he began to concentrate energy in his hand to attack. The fireball hit the goblin with a direct hit and he fell to the ground. The flame did not go out, but he immediately got up and rushed towards our hero. The major dodged one blow after another, also striking the monster with his stone hand. Once in the body, the monster writhed in pain, and then he fell to his knee, groaning in pain. Screaming for him to die, our hero struck him with a kick. The blow fell directly on the face. The monster was thrown back several meters but he immediately regrouped and approached Jason. He immediately attacked the hero who had to take the blow. The blow was powerful. It threw our hero away like a feather, but he was able to land on his feet. He pushed off from the wall, gaining good speed. And a few seconds later, he found himself near the goblin again. He dodged attacks in the air, trying to get closer to the animal's body. When suddenly he found himself right next to the leader's face, he could not even touch him. Making his fist hard, he struck the monster. The impact knocked the animal to the ground. The sounds of the impact were heard for several hundred meters around. Thick dust rose. There was silence in the region. The sounds of battle stopped. 
As soon as the dust settled, the leader of the goblins could be seen lying motionless on the ground. Our main character stood on his head, wiping his shoes on his face. He breathed a sigh of relief. The green-eyed man was dead. Elsa was holding the card in her hands when suddenly the green mark disappeared. Everyone began to rejoice, because the disappearance of the mark meant the victory of our main character. After some time, joyful cries began to be heard again. Jason returned safely to his main squad. Everyone began to shout with trepidation and joy about Jason's return. He in turn walked silently, smiling. Eve thought that if Major had not been with them, at least one of them would have survived. He single-handedly destroyed a monster of this size. Not only ordinary people, even awakened ones could not get close to this monster. Even if I had his skills, I would still never get close to such a monster. The weapons were significantly strengthened. Using stones obtained from monsters, the Mac Guild became stronger than other awakened factions. For example, better archers of the Mac Guild can easily cope with second-level monsters. What if other awakened ones had the same power as him? Perhaps such people would destroy everything in their path and exterminate people worse than monsters. How many people regretted that they were born with such monsters at the same time, Eve reasoned. Jason said that he would take a few people with him and go to Han. Just like in Chan, the remaining people settled in the town hall for protection. He also added that using the map, it will be possible to find out where the monsters are heading. But the situation in the region is not entirely clear. You two will have to monitor everything and report on movements in both areas. Ava also reasoned that every time he very quickly explained the essence of the mission and carried it out just as quickly, there was a feeling that he had already gone through all this more than once. He, of course, was stronger than the others, but he didn't want his comrades to leave him. There was a feeling that he was going to leave us, the girl continued to reason. At this time, it was calm at Hana International Airport. Upon entering the airport, the golden thicket was already filled. Luckily, there were only a few henchmen around. Jason began to voice the list of tasks that were sent to his phone. The first was to prevent the murder of the colonel, the murder of one of the leaders, and the third was to prevent the plan to melt down the nuclear power plant. Blade said that after awakening the situation should improve, but it seems to me that everything is only getting worse. Ella added that she does not know anyone from this list, why someone needs to be killed. Robert said that the important problem is the nuclear power plant. Our main character, that it is necessary to at least somehow explain the destruction of the nuclear power plant. To which Brad began to say that a nuclear power plant meltdown is an accidental overheating, in which partial atomic fragmentation occurs, leading to the melting of fuel cells and other parts of the editor. Blade, in a surprised voice, said that this is cool because Robert is so knowledgeable. Julie added that one of the areas of special forces training is related to nuclear power plants. Scott added that if the shell was damaged or there was a leak of nuclear fuel, then the master would have already told us about it. Elsa added that now everything can be fixed, at least stop them before anything happens. Jason immediately said that the nuclear power plant is located 60 kilometers from the events of the dream. If a leak occurs there, then the city can under no circumstances be used as a stronghold. In other words, at the moment when I died in my dream, the nuclear power plant had not yet leaked our hero reasoned. Ella immediately added that this is possible if someone is deliberately trying to create a problem. Ava added that she thinks that there is a high probability that the work of monsters is extremely high, but it cannot be ruled out that people may be involved in this. Jason immediately said that only a six-headed snake could think of such a thing. Robert said that in other words, this so-called snake was banished by the master to another country, trying to take revenge he decided to open Pandora's box in the form of a nuclear power plant. Scott asked with a frightened look, was it really to attract attention? Everyone fell silent. Jason began to say that what bothered him most was the bombers he saw before his death. Everyone asked in surprise, which bombers? Blade didn't understand. He asked them why everyone was so scared, to which Brad explained to him that only the United States has such strategic bombers. Jason thought that they must prevent all this. Otherwise, the earth will end. Julie and Brad stood surprised and scared at the same time, cold sweat running down their faces. When suddenly soldiers entered the room, Elsa asked them why they came without orders. The girl standing behind the fighters immediately apologized, saying that it was all her persistence. A girl stood in front of them. Her appearance was foreign. 
Jason looked at her and thought that the awakened one was standing in front of him. Was it by chance that she was the same Kate? She looked at the Major and asked if he was the leader of this detachment. At this time, the hum of engines was heard on the bridge. Several military vehicles were moving across the bridge at a not particularly high speed. In one of them sat a lieutenant colonel who said that Jason dealt with everything too quickly. The Capitol's army used its firepower and military elite to kill ten monsters. In any case, it is very difficult to get here. Currently, all forces are concentrated north of the river. After all, the military and government had no choice but to reorganize, Albert reasoned. He also thought that he would never have thought of calling Major Jason. At the airport, Albert and Jason sat at the same table. There was pressure in the air. Our hero talked about finding Kate, but she is not going to tell the Capitol's Defense Army about this. Jason also asked the lieutenant colonel to arrange a meeting for him with Colonel Jun. Albert responded by telling him that he would have done the same thing in his place, after which he asked our protagonist what he was going to do next. To which he replied that he was going to go to Bowie. Albert told him to remember that it was very dangerous there. No matter how many people they sent there, no one returned alive. But he immediately answered the lieutenant colonel not to worry. Now the most important thing is to meet with Colonel Jun. This must be done no later than July. The hero set off on his journey. With him was Kate, whom he took with him to ensure her protection. Upon entering the region, distant sounds of running creatures could be heard. Approaching a little closer, a crowd of spider-like monsters appeared before our heroes. Cars began to rise into the air. It was the power of our protagonist who lifted the cars. A few seconds later, hundreds of cars were sent straight into the crowd of monsters. They drove by without even getting out of the car. Kate was surprised because she had not previously seen the strength of our main character. Earlier, the girl asked our main character to go with her to buoy. Everyone was surprised by her words because they had previously discussed something similar. After some time, she added that for some time she would not be able to get to the defensive post of the capital where her father was located. Blade wondered out loud why Bew. But Scott suddenly shouted that you were going to take the great incense burner from the National Museum in Bowie, to which Jason replied that that was exactly the case. The guy asked her if she was ready to go with him. There was a pistol and a knife on the table. The girl entered the fight. Jason watched her. Kate fired the pistol, releasing a full clip. The red-eyed creatures died one after another. As soon as the cartridges in the pistol ran out, the girl began to swing her sword. All the monsters of the first level were also dying. Jason told her that she had excellent training. After some time, he collected all the crystals from the monsters, after which he held them out to the girl and told her to eat them. They went on their way. The girl thoughtfully looked at our hero. She thought about what kind of person Major Jason was. He, in turn, did not understand why she was looking at him so intently. When suddenly Jason stopped abruptly. Coming out, he began to look into the distance. The girl asked the man what had happened to which he replied that a man died four kilometers away. At this time, people were rampaging four kilometers away. One was chasing the other. The man was running away from the pursuer in fear, when suddenly he thrust a spear straight into his back. He was lying on the ground. They said that they were tired of killing people just like that. Swinging his spear, the attacker told the man lying down to die quickly. They started getting ready to leave. Suddenly, from behind her, she noticed that a man was watching them, they asked the one in surprise who he was. A few seconds later, all the attackers were lying on the ground. After examining one of the attackers, he noticed a black stone sword. He thought that not a single fighter had returned from Buje. Why? When suddenly Kate began to scream, the Major looked at her in surprise. As he approached, he saw that the man was still alive. He was talking about them saving his daughter and wife so that they would kill the monsters. When suddenly his hand dropped... Jason closed his eyes. The girl asked the man why people fight among themselves, and not with monsters, to which he replied that people began to kill each other since the end of the world. He asked her if this didn't happen in her country. Turning away, he said that he was the same as these attackers. The girl remained silent. At this time, an incomprehensible atmosphere reigned in Buya. People were screaming in the large football stadium. People with machine guns were discussing the fact that people from other squads were now idle, why only they had to suffer. Our main character was already watching them. He thought that the scale of these places was much larger than he had imagined. Returning to Kate, there were people in front of him, whom he asked why they were following them. 
to which they began to say that they believe that Jason is good, because he got rid of those bad people. To which Jason replied that he had not come here to save them, but so that nothing would interfere with him. He would deal with them. Everyone stood surprised. They began to talk about how it was originally a cult led by some woman. They were forced to join it. They kept the lower-level women locked up and abused them, and the men were forced to work until they died. A great incense burner in the hands of the leader could summon by divine beasts. After they told everything, they immediately began begging Jason to save them and the others. Jason thought that time was running out. He needed to quickly come up with a plan of action. In some camp near Bew in the mountains, screams began to be heard. A man was running and shouting about something. A girl appeared in front of him holding some kind of weapon in her hands. The girl immediately began to wonder what had happened, and also added that if it was not something serious, then she would finish him off right away. But they began to talk about how a sudden uprising had broken out in Buya, and several groups had already been destroyed. He also added that he had heard that their leader was a woman with golden hair. After some time, the sounds of explosions began to be heard. The soldiers fired. Buildings exploded and went up in flames. After the shelling, everyone immediately rushed to attack. The woman screamed that no one was being released and also ordered to kill everyone. The man standing next to her said that it was not he who thought that the unbelievers would resist, so they could limit themselves to only a large number of their people. But the woman replied that at such moments it was necessary to attack for sure. The soldiers combing the area wondered why it was so quiet. They could not believe that after so many shells no one was killed. The woman, smiling, said that they should drag each rebel and tear off their skin. Our main character was already watching her. A little earlier, Jason gave instructions to the residents. The instructions were that at first they would have to fight them, and then they should retreat to cover. People began to ask our hero if he was really going to fight them alone, to which Jason replied that he thought he could deal with them within ten minutes. A man was approaching the red-haired woman, shouting her name. He ran a little closer. He began to shout that there were no people there, but something strange on a horse defeated their detachment, when suddenly someone hit him from behind. He fell to the ground. A horse stood behind him. The Messiah jumped up. The squad that was near the Messiah began to scream. The woman immediately began to use the artifact. She summoned a tiger and a dragon. The men stood behind her, saying that their commander was serious. Sacred animals appeared before the rider. The Messiah said that she did not know where he came from, but he could not cope with her forces alone. Turning to her fighters, she ordered to find the one who controls this rider. Suddenly the wall broke, dust rose, a shockwave lifted people into the air and threw back the fighters. Everyone started yelling to look around. No one understood what had happened. But our main character was already standing in front of the rider. The Messiah, looking at Major, asked him whether he was the leader of the unbelievers. At this time, there was silence at the tower. The fighters gathered around the head of the green-eyed man. Men in suits stood directly in front of his head. These people began to ask Major Ricky what he thought about this. He began to say that he believed that there was no difference between the monsters. They began to discuss the future course of action. They also discussed the fact that they did not think that the Ministry of Defense would arrange such a dirty trick for them. As they left, one of them said that they didn't think they would put their lives in danger because of one guy. A man remained standing with Major Ricky. Ricky asked him when he would take care of him. To which he replied that now is not the time to take care of him. In response, Ricky only smiled and the man stood tense. He started talking about a relic. It was called a white jade bowl. After a while, a certain number of relics would appear. They would need to collect them. The Major asked what could be done with their help to which he replied that whatever you want. Smiling, the guy replied that he understood. At this time, some screams were heard in the building where our heroes were waiting. Blade didn't understand what the hell was going on. Blade and Ella stood and did not understand what Scott wanted from them. What he asked them to look at. Standing at the map, he said that this concerned a monster of the fifth level, that is, a blue class. He was in the city of John. Elsa screamed that they needed to get ready. Robert said that in their situation, it's not that the fourth, even the third, is beyond his strength, to which Eva said. But now it's not clear to everyone what's wrong with the master, because there's been no news for nine whole days. Brad said with a scared face that even the defense army had no dealings with the blue class. 
Cold sweat flowed down Elsa's face as she thought about how long they would rely only on the master. At this time, there was a battle between our hero and the commander of the believers. The girl stood in shock. She did not understand how an ordinary person could be stronger than the monster that was summoned using an incense burner. Jason and his rider easily fought off the attacks of the animals. As soon as the opportunity arose, the man immediately rushed towards the woman. He used his flame power. But the girl was able to defend herself. Just a little more, and she would have already been dead, she thought. Jason looked at her with contempt, thinking about something. Approaching her, the messiah tried to attack our protagonist. She threw a flashbang at him. A grenade exploded, no one saw anything, everyone was blinded. But Jason was already standing behind the woman, raising his hand. He hit her right in the face. She, unable to withstand the blow, flew back several meters. The messiah lay on the ground, she could not even move. On the ground right next to our hero's feet lay a Cyrillic alphabet. The woman tried with all her strength to get up. She started screaming that Jason was a bastard and God's punishment would fall on him. But he only looked at her with a cold gaze. Jason raised his sword up, saying that if she wants to be human at least for a moment, she must die and atone for all her sins, she began to beg for mercy. Blood began to flow down the ground. Almost all of the Messiah's fighters lay on the ground, and cries of victory were heard. Jason thought about the great incense burner and the bronze statue of the Bodhisattva. Holding the incense burner in his hands, Jason thought that it could easily destroy a level 3 monster, an excellent catch. Kate started screaming about whether it had to come to this, but Jason didn't answer. She continued that having such abilities, did he really have to kill them all? Among those killed, there were probably those who joined the sect against their own will. Did you repay them in the same coin? The girl asked, and also said that this is not justice. When leaving, our hero said that there could be no talk of any justice. This is revenge for what they did. As long as they remain enemies, they must die, the man said. And finally he said that before he every day thought about death, but everything has changed. From now on he is fighting for life, so sympathy is useless. Already driving in the car, Cainty asked the Major if they were going to John to hunt a level 5 monster. To which he replied that it was true, because it was necessary to build a base in the south of the province, and the presence of this monster posed a great threat. In John, Jason heard shots, but there was no pressure, that is, it was not a level 5 monster. He immediately rushed towards these sounds, wondering what was happening. The two fighters stood in front of a horde of monsters. They said that the cartridges had run out, and the rest of the comrades were dead. They were also finished. In front of them stood an orange monster, a level 3 monster. They said that it was a pity that they could not complete the mission. A huge crowd of monsters rushed towards the fighters. Suddenly, our main character began to use his power. An explosion occurred right in front of the two fighters. The orange monster did not understand what was happening, but our main character was already approaching him. The fighters saw little from the shockwave, but they wondered what was happening. Suddenly, the orange one attacked our main character. A second later, Jason was already standing behind the monster holding his katana below. The monster began to scream in pain, and a second later, its body was cut in half. A small impact crater appeared around the monster. Kanth and the soldiers looked at Major Jason in surprise, the fighter said that Scott had sent them to deliver the letter. The letter contained Scott's reasoning in which he came to the conclusion that someone had brought the blue-eyed man to the city on purpose. Jason immediately thought about the six-headed snake. The fighters also talked about that everyone is preparing to fight the monster. Jason thought that someone had summoned the monster. The power of the artifacts was involved here. These two fighters, along with the others, left four days ago, but the monster overtook Chon the day before yesterday, there is a high probability that now the city has turned into hell. If the military initially wanted to destroy the Mac Guild, then they would not have allowed them to just cross the bridge. But the bridge was completely destroyed. No, it's not time yet, no matter what Jason thought. Everyone was in a hurry somewhere. She climbed onto the ship. The guy stood with his head down, thinking that everything was not going as they had planned. The fighter reported that the bridge had been destroyed. Everyone lowered their heads. At this time, our heroes were heatedly discussing something when suddenly Scott shouted that this was a sixth-level monster. He was a dangerous criminal even for their master. Elsa said in a calm voice that they really have a choice. They don't know where the monster came from and wherever he goes, they cannot guarantee the safety of all citizens, so they need to be prepared for war. 
everyone stood in shock. She also added that they need to gather all the awakened ones who are able to fight. Their goal is not victory, but to hold out as long as possible. Blade said that he now understands why the commander entrusted the command to her. Ella said that she was joining them, because medical personnel are necessary during the battle. Scott said that they could only hope that the letter still reached the master. A few days later, the heroes began to engage in battle with the creature. Julie and Brad were lying on the ground unconscious. Eva's condition was deplorable. She also lay unconscious. Robert sat leaning against the wall. He could not even move. A monster stood on a destroyed building, spreading its wings. The appearance of Elsa and Blade was also deplorable. They were standing on their feet with all their strength. Suddenly there was a roar. The monster attacked. Ella stood behind the wall, watching everything. The monster began to attack our heroes. They, in turn, prepared to take the blow. Blade raised the bat with all his strength. Elsa raised the machine gun. Their bodies were at their limit. There was a tank near the battlefield, as well as special military equipment. It was destroyed. There was an incredible number of fighters lying around. The monster stood in front of our heroes. A man watched the battlefield, looking from a distance. He said that he could not even imagine that they would hold out for so long. He thought that it would be interesting to see Jason's face when he returned. Suddenly, he started laughing. The monster began to scream as if he was saying that the games were over and now would be his last attack. Blade rushed into battle first. Elsa screamed at him to stop. The guy recalled the words of the Major, who told him that he needed to fight as a team. The Major said that if Elsa and Blade worked together, they would be able to defeat a level 3 monster, but that was no more. So Jason at that moment told them to retreat if the monster was much higher level. Blade thought that he was tired of retreating. Robert looked at Eve and talked about how he could believe he fought such a monster. Ella ran up to him, holding something in her hands. She told Robert to eat her faster. She said that they first need to raise those who are able to move, and why do they have no choice but to retreat? Elsa fired at the standing monster. The girl managed to move and land direct hits. The monster began to scream even louder. He became angry. At this time, Blade was already attacking him. Elsa thought that the rifle was useless, while Blade thought that now his strength was more powerful than a cannonball. He landed a direct hit right on the creature's head. There was a roar and dust rose. Robert and Ella turned around because the sound of the impact was very loud. Blade stood on the monster's head, smiling. When suddenly Elsa screamed at him to leave quickly, she rushed towards him. The monster quickly got up and threw our hero off his head. The girl was hit with a direct hit. Our hero scattered several meters in different directions. Ella screamed their names. Robert stood scared. The girl immediately rose to her feet. When suddenly an explosion occurred, the girl turned away. Everyone was scared by the explosion, but as soon as the girl turned around, she saw a man standing right in front of her. Blade stood up with all his strength and said that he was not so easy to kill. Our main character stood in front of Elsa. Blade and Elsa were surprised. They didn't expect him to arrive so quickly. The others also stood in a stupor. The Major immediately ordered them to carry away the wounded and leave. Everything else was left to him, after which he praised them for holding out for so long. Looking at the monster, he shouted at them not to stand there, but to leave as quickly as possible. After which he immediately rushed into battle, Elsa screamed that Jason would not be able to cope with this monster alone. When suddenly the clatter of hooves began to be heard, it was a rider. And the animals, as well as the rider, appeared behind them with incredible speed. They couldn't understand what it was or where it came from, when suddenly Kate shouted that this was the relic she told them about before leaving. Kate, using the power of animals, recalled the words of the master. He gave her the relic. The girl thought that she didn't have as much energy as he did, so he gave her the relic. The rider was the first to enter the battle, striking with a spear. The rest of the animals began to throw the monster to the ground, and our main character was already in the air above it. Major Ricky was still watching the battle. He was unhappy that our main character came so early. Kate shouted that if it wouldn't be a problem for them, then they should take out the bronze statue. She also explained how to use it. At the end, she added that she would not be able to use two relics. Blade held the statue in his hands and looked at it. Elsa looked at the current master in shock, thinking that he had become even stronger. A fight has already begun between the monster and Major Jason. The monsters also struck at the creature, not allowing it to rest even for a second. Jason looked at the monster with a cold gaze. 
Suddenly, the monster broke out of the dragon and rushed towards our main character. He released some spikes, and naturally the hero easily dodged. And a barrier rose above our heroes that protected them. Jason began to chop the spikes that the monster was throwing towards our heroes. A strong wind arose due to the fast movements of our hero's katana. The monster stopped attacking our heroes. The rider and the monsters began to disappear. Jason took off his jacket, throwing it on the ground, ready to fight. He looked at the monster, examining it. Raising his katana, he said that he was thinking of fighting a level 5 monster, and it would be much easier to defeat him. Raising his daggers into the air, he told the monster, Let's do this. The monster began to scream, as if he answered our hero that he agreed. Jason sent daggers towards the monster, and then he jumped high into the air. But the monster did not pay attention to the daggers. He immediately raised his head and opened his mouth, gathering energy in his throat. There was an explosion and flames rose. Everyone stood shocked. They thought that the monster had hit the hero. He attacked our hero with some kind of beam. Everyone stood shocked. They thought that the monster had hit the hero. But Jason successfully dodged, moving quickly along the ground and did not allow the monster to attack him. He continued to shoot some kind of beam at him. But the monster never hit Jason. Our hero thought that this monster has good hunting experience, which is why he fights so well. The monster finally hit our main character. Jason's entire body tensed and blood began to flow from his mouth. Dust rose because the shockwave was incredible. The major was able to stop the blow by blocking the monster's beak with his katana. When our heroes saw Jason's condition, they tried to get closer, but he screamed that they would only get in the way. Jason's clothes began to tear because all the muscles on his body were under critical tension. But he was able to escape. He attacked the monster, thereby repulsing it. Jason thought that he would not be able to hold out for long. He needed to wait for a good moment to attack. The monster began to gather energy again. Everyone stood surprised. Robert said that his combat power was far beyond human capabilities. When suddenly Jason thought about the heart. At this time, the battle between the monster and our main characters continued. Jason used all his strength to create the moment to attack. As soon as the monster hesitated for a moment... Jason immediately rushed towards him. He plunged his katana straight into his chest. He began to scream in pain. He began to take off. Everyone stood with their mouths open because no one could believe that their commander could defeat the monster alone. The monster began to hit the buildings. With one of his paws, he tried to grab the major. But he successfully jumped into the nearest building. The man thought that this was his last chance, so he needed to act at his maximum. He began to collect energy in his hand. At this time, the monster had already begun to attack our hero. Jason gave his last strength, he screamed. Suddenly, the katana pierced the monster's heart. The creature froze and began to descend. They both started falling to the ground. Level 5 was defeated, but our protagonist's wounds were also critical. After some time, our heroes carefully approached our hero and helped him. He climbed onto the creature's head, walking slowly, swinging his katana. Everyone was screaming as Level 5 had been defeated. Ava lay on the ground and looked into the distance, smiling. Julie and Brad also began to rise with surprised faces. Major Ricky, who watched the battle, could not believe his eyes. Out of anger, he broke his binoculars. Jason stood on the bird, looking into its eyes, when suddenly he swung his hand and took out a blue stone. Everyone watched Jason carefully. No one knew what would happen and who the awakened one could turn into if he ate the blue stone. The Major swallowed the stone and there was silence. Ricky thought that this should not have happened. He got on his bike and rode off. Sometime later, Major Jason and Lieutenant Colonel Albert met. They talked about meeting with the colonel and the defense commander. The lieutenant colonel listened carefully to Jason, and after listening, he said that he would set a new date with the colonel. Albert also told Jason that he most likely would not be able to negotiate calmly, to which our hero replied that he was not only thinking about negotiations— at this time, people were shouting about some kind of gathering, when suddenly Scott screamed that it was time for a break. The current battle has resulted in numerous casualties. The survivors and wounded were sent for treatment and recovery, despite the fact that there were not many fighters left. For a while, they did not have to worry about the monsters. That killed creature was so huge that other monsters seemed like ants against its background. No one was allowed to remain alone. Scott looked at our main character and thought that after all, it might have been much easier for him alone. Scott ordered everyone to go to the workshop. 
When they went inside, they saw a creative mess. Everything was scattered. They were met by Redval. He immediately greeted them and then said that these were weapons and armor made from the teeth and bones of orcs and the king of vultures. He began to talk in detail about what he had done. Everyone listened attentively to the story. Kate will use an incense burner to focus on defense, and Ella will receive a bronze figurine to heal wounded soldiers. The rest got weapons that they had to get used to instantly. The weapon seemed heavy and difficult to use. But in reality, everything turned out to be wrong. Jason simply had his old katana upgraded. Jason took Scott with him on the trip, and Lieutenant Colonel Albert also went with them. Scott could not believe that the neighboring city was so badly destroyed, to which the lieutenant colonel replied that if it had not been for the dragon, the city would have been saved, and Albert also said that they could not inflict even the slightest damage on it, using all their firepower. After Albert said dragon, our main character immediately remembered this monster. Suddenly the military cargo stopped. The lieutenant colonel opened the window asking why they made them stop, to which the fighters replied that they were fighting monsters right now, and that the exact number of monsters had not yet been established. There were shouts nearby that a new wave was coming again. While firing at them, the soldiers shouted that they should not let them pass. The soldiers did not stop firing, and there was a thick smell of gunpowder in the air. The monsters began to break through. The first row of fighters began to retreat when Jason appeared in front of them. He told everyone to step back and close their mouths. The monsters were still approaching heading straight towards the fighters and our hero. Jason, when asked who he was, replied that they would definitely find out who he was. He threw the cartridge straight into the crowd of fleeing monsters. After some time, our fighters arrived, entering the building, the fighters began to pronounce the name Jason. Everyone was shocked to see him repeating his name. The senior officer stood silently, looking at the entrance. Jason walked into the building with a smile on his face. The lieutenant colonel was smoking a cigarette and looking into the distance, he was puzzled by something. Exhaling heavily, he took a deep drag on the cigarette and then threw it away. The commander and the major were sitting at the negotiating table. Jason glared at him, showing his displeasure. The commander, in turn, tried to understand what our hero would now demand. The rest of the fighters were also tense, because there was pressure in the air. Scott, standing next to the Major, thought that everyone was so calm and he was breaking into a sweat because of the atmosphere here. The commander began the conversation first, asking Jason if he had really come to ask for compensation for the damage, to which he replied that that was exactly the case, as well as a reward for a level 5 murder. The commander, in turn, said that they call themselves an independent organization, but are asking for a reward from the military. The commander also added that they came here to threaten, to which Jason answered him that if they want to accuse them of something, then let them accuse them. When suddenly the man shouted that he had had enough. Our heroes were surrounded by soldiers. They were aiming at them with machine guns. Some fighters remembered the strength of our protagonist and were afraid of even the slightest movement from him. Jason exhaled as calmly as possible, after which he said that he did not threaten anyone but only asked for payment. Suddenly a wind appeared right in the room, which began to pull everyone down, exerting incredible pressure. Jason released a small part of his powers. All the fighters stood trembling. They did not understand what was happening. Jason asked them if they really wanted blood to be shed. Everyone began to tremble even more because a tough aura was emanating from our hero. Suddenly the general said that his proposal was accepted. The colonel tried to dissuade the general, but he closed his mouth. Also, after some time, the general added that he had one condition. They had to take care of a green rank monster that was heading to the mountain area, to which Jason agreed, but also added that they had to give him four relics. When our heroes left, the colonel asked the general why he decided so, to which he looked at him with a contemptuous look and said that he was an idiot. He added that they could execute this guy, however. They should not risk their destruction. He also talked about how at the moment he has no choice but to pay. Going out on the street, he met Major Ricky, who greeted him. Jason, in turn, remained silent. Extending his hand, he told our hero that they had already met once, but then they did not manage to get to know each other properly. Suddenly, the master interrupted him, saying that they had seen him twice and that he should not accidentally forget in Buka. They went towards the bank. Scott wondered if these two were really going to fight. He thought that it would be better to go get the relics for now.
Scratching his head, Ricky told Jason to finish him right there if he didn't like him. Jason asked him why he brought a level 5 monster to Buka, to which he said, and that's all. He began to talk about a relic called a white jade cup. He said that this cup, after injecting mana into the relic, a drink is formed in it. When you drink it, an aura is created around you that attracts monsters. To which Jason replied that he was now beginning to understand. Driving home, Scott told Jason about what relics he took. They also started discussing the six-headed snake. Jason also said that he would cooperate with anyone in any case, only his guild would benefit. After some time, Jason said in a rough voice that he would deal with the fourth-level monster. Arriving at their destination, they saw many bodies of dead monsters. Having walked a little further, he noticed in the distance a creature with three green eyes glowing. A three-headed creature appeared before him. It immediately rushed to attack, with the intention of killing our hero. He prepared to take the blow. The monster's screams were a terrifying scream of the fifth level. There was a noise that carried for several kilometers around. Lieutenant Colonel Albert watched over all this. The fighters were also nearby, and there was tension in the air. One of the fighters, who was holding a camera in his hands, said that he expected a lot from a monster of the blue level, but not that the battle would be one way. Suddenly, the lieutenant colonel gave the order that it was all over, they were returning. Our main character stood and looked at the monster lying on the ground. His entire body was mutilated and also torn into several pieces. Jason took the green crystal from the animal's body and ate it. Several other men also watched the fight. They were stunned by the strength of our main character. They could not believe what they saw. The two fighters discussed the fact that they were afraid to deliver the letter to him because it seemed to them that he would also butcher them like a monster. An argument ensued between them. A man stood behind them. Feeling that someone was behind them, they immediately grabbed their weapons and turned around, aiming at the man. This man turned out to be our main character, Major Jason. He praised the fighters for their excellent reactions and also suggested that they were sent by the general. They handed him the letter and he carefully began to read it. Having finished reading, he crumpled the letter. Two soldiers asked the hero whether there would be an answer to the general, because he ordered to return with him. To which Jason said in a cold voice that they should tell him that if he wants to die, then let him come to him. The fighters stood surprised. At this time, a noise was heard in my head. The table was broken. The people standing nearby frowned. The man who broke the table was saying that this bastard was really trying to gain autonomy in order to absorb the entire Chon zone. Two fighters with trembling voices said that in John, the flag of the Mac Guild was raised. The two men made sullen faces. At this time, our heroes gathered in the city hall building. Scott was tracing an area with a red pen. He was saying that since they had secured the natural gas base and the oil reserve base, they didn't have to worry about energy anymore. He also thought that the remaining religious fanatics would be destroyed in the near future. Suddenly, Scott noticed that the bowl was filled with liquid. There was silence. The fighter handed the liquid to the major who drank it in order to see the expected future. He saw in the future what the Mayan calendar received. He saw that some men were attacking and shouting that only the dragon slayer remained. They also shouted that he had received the dragon's curse. Jason's skin took on a kind of gray appearance as he fought against them. When suddenly he woke up, his body did not tremble this time. But he was tired. Jason thought that it was just a terrible dream. He told what he saw to his comrade, who heatedly began to discuss it. Ella talked about Stonehenge being in London, and she also began to talk about the curse. A girl and a guy joined the discussion. Jason said that it would soon become clear whether this was the future or an ordinary dream. Also, our main character began to argue that the line of defense had many relics in reserve, the strong defenses of the capital were probably waiting for their enemies to begin to destroy themselves, because they only had enough food and energy for six months. But after some time, he added that they could only monitor the actions of both sides and wait for the right time to come. Suddenly there was a cry that they understood everything. After some time there was to be a meeting. Jason took Elsa with him, and a dozen fighters stood opposite them. The eyes of the guild leader and the general closed, each of them introduced themselves. The general took over the conversation. He said that based on the letter, they should have understood that they needed their help. Therefore, if you do not want the army to send a gun towards the guild, they should were to help them. To which our hero clearly answered that if they are going to threaten them, 
then let them try to fight them. The general said that he could not trust them. To which Jason replied that he didn't care, he wanted to hear the reason why he should choose his side of the two sides. When Jason suddenly added that he had a proposal, the general fell silent. Our hero suggested that he give the soldiers and command of the detachment. The soldiers behind the general began to be indignant. Some time later, our hero said that he was collaborating with the capital's defense contractor in order to recognize autonomy. After a while, he would send the assassin to the colonel. With a cold gaze, he said that if they trusted him, then he would have no reason to refuse. There was silence. The general sat shocked by the major's proposal. He asked the commander-in-chief of the guild what he would have left if he gave up his fighters. To which our hero answered clearly he will remain alive. At this time, screams were heard again near the head. The man stood and smoked. Anxiety and tension were visible on his face. Two men standing a little further away were discussing the fact that they had already suffered huge losses in Khan. When suddenly they approached a man standing closer to the window, he told them that the general was initially inclined towards the idea of nuclear weapons. But they, in turn, began to say that this was not a sound idea. They fell silent. They looked into the distance. Each of them was in his own thoughts. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Albert was talking with Major Jason. He told the Major that ensuring the safety of nuclear power means not only visiting nuclear power plants and planting flags on them, but also ensuring sufficient safety for the operation of nuclear power plants on the way to them. Scott, standing nearby, said that if everything worked out, they would be able to take relics from the Buddha Temple, the tablets of the Great King, or even the Golden Lord. The Lieutenant Colonel said that at this moment in the area, two monsters of the fifth and fourth levels have been identified. It will be more difficult than ever. When suddenly Jason said that he was refusing, he explained this by saying that it was very dangerous to secure the path along the mountain. He would have to use all the human resources of the Mac Guild. He was not going to sacrifice his people so that the enemies could strike from behind. Albert, with a surprised face, asked Jason if he really thought that there was a spy in the capital's defense command, to which he replied that if it was impossible to destroy the parasites, then they needed to kill their leader. But Albert also said that he understands that Jason has enough strength to kill them, but they need fighters and awakened ones to protect civilians, to this the general. When Jason suddenly interrupted, saying that he had already met with the general, the lieutenant colonel could not believe what he heard. After a few seconds of silence, he added that exactly 13 minutes ago, the general became a military man of the Mech Guild. The Mac Guild accepted the request for nuclear security, Lieutenant Colonel Albert reported. He was making a report to some senior military man. A man standing nearby said that his comrade thought that the Amec Guild would want to use the nuclear power plant as their own. He did not stop guessing when suddenly his commander told him to put everything on paper. He saluted and left. At this time on the tower, the three men still continued their discussion. One of them said that Mr. Mao's Jade Bird had arrived. It said that they had sent reinforcements from Japan. The man thought that he needed to find the golden ruler and the flute of immortality as quickly as possible in order to take control of all the capital's defense forces and then get rid of the general. At this time in Vaughan, the sounds of trucks were heard. The goal is to ensure the safety of nuclear power plants. Firstly, to secure the path. Thirdly, constant protection of objects. A thousand people, including the awakened ones, will go to the mountain. There are no rules in this hunt. Everything you get will be yours, Jason said. At this time, there was silence in Chon. The fighters moved at incredible speed, their faces covered with masks. One of the masked fighters talked about how they were going to strike at the Mac Guild. He said that they were ordinary rebels while Jason was gone. This was the time to strike. The first goal is to capture the City Hall building. They also needed to buy enough time for reinforcements from Japan to arrive. Using the jade bird, he sent it flying into the air. He asked her to tell her what he just said. The bird began to fly further and further, and after a few seconds it disappeared. The masked fighters continued to approach the guild. At this time, at Chan's hospital, Ella was supervising the doctors. They discussed the fact that there were 1,300 bags of medicine left. Ella said that they should allocate 300 kilograms for a group of patients in recovery and that they reduce the amount of therapeutic water as much as possible. Scott turned to the woman. She asked him how it went, to which Scott replied that it would all be over soon. 
there was a masked man on the roof watching over the hospital. At this time, masked fighters were already advancing. They discussed among themselves on the radio that the undercover agents reported that there were no security enemies in the hospital, only doctors. Entering the room where they were supposed to be met by an agent who was supposed to give them a key card, they saw a woman lying on the ground tied up. They began to broadcast on the radio that Group A had been destroyed by the Awakened. The masked fighters began to fall to the ground one after another. Our main character looked around the room. The radios were shouting for the group to report the situation. The shouts were not switched over to the radio. No one answered. The man standing on the roof, grimacing his face, thought that they knew about everything. He immediately wanted to retreat and report everything to his boss. He immediately took off, moving with incredible speed. At this time, there was silence on the tower. Everyone was waiting. The lieutenant colonel said that special forces use infiltration, assassination, and abduction skills. He also added that he couldn't believe that anyone else was trying to kill Jason. It was a waste of time. The man standing on the roof was already reporting to his boss about what had happened. The boss listened with trepidation to the story of his subordinate. He started yelling at him, saying that everything should have ended well. When suddenly the subordinate sensed danger, he shouted to his boss to jump. But he didn't have time. His leg was pierced through. He screamed in pain. His subordinate managed to dodge the blow. Our main character, Major Jason, appeared before him. He said that he couldn't believe that they allowed him to remember the old days, but there was nothing difficult about getting into them. He in turn called our hero. Throwing off his body armor and scabbard, he unleashed his power. He screamed that he would kill him. After that, he immediately rushed towards Jason in order to attack him. His speed was incredibly high, and in a split second he approached our hero. But he was easily able to dodge the attacker's blow. But he tried to attack again, but Jason blocked the blow. Then he delivered a direct blow to the chin. And then he stuck the sword in his leg. A second later, the attacker was already lying on the ground. Our hero's hand hardened. His gaze was frightening. He was telling him to think carefully. There was screaming and screaming. The boss sat with his face grimaced. His subordinate lay on the ground, covered in blood. The man sitting on the ground asked to kill him. But Jason replied that he had no plans to kill him. After some time, he said, six-headed snake, the man was surprised. He asked our main character how he knew, to which our main character answered him in a rude voice so that he would answer the questions he was asking. The first question was why they made a deal with someone else if they had an agreement with them, to which he replied that they sent monster stones that they managed to obtain during the hunt in exchange for relics and information. He was tasked with finding the royal artifact. He spoke about the flute of immortality and the golden ruler. Jason thought about it. He thought about the actions of the six-headed snake as well as the artifacts. When suddenly some hands took the boss by the shoulders. He got very scared, screamed, Jason turned around. A grenade was flying at him at high speed. Our main character managed to react, raising the barrier in order to protect himself from the explosion. Masked fighters appeared and threw shurikens towards our hero. But Jason immediately began to use his power. The masked fighters began to fall to the ground, one after another. When suddenly they began to retreat, it seemed that they were only distracting the attention of our hero. Jason realized this and immediately turned back. He saw the chief lying on the ground, his body covered in blood. Looking at the lying fighters, Jason thought about what the ninja were trying to prove. Did they really want to show their confidence? Our hero also thought about relics from another country and a six-headed snake. He reasoned that the strength of Japan should not be underestimated, however. Their army is small, and the situation is much worse than theirs. He said out loud that he could not allow enemies to set foot on this land again. The wind began to rise, and there was pressure in the air. The soldiers who returned from the forest reported to their commander that they had seen the man for the first time, but his strength was incredible, and the aura emanating from him was frightening. They also added that despite this, the elimination mission was completed successfully. Their commander thought that the authorities had been dissatisfied for a long time, and they would be able to avoid suspicion of his death. Thanks to that man, in addition, this man's relationship with the six-headed snake made it difficult to attack these lands. When suddenly he shouted that great job and they were coming back. When suddenly he threw a dagger straight towards one of the fighters. He in turn jumped back, it was our main character. He caught the dagger right in front of his face. The nearby ninja fighters immediately jumped back. 
they were afraid of Jason's strength. They did not understand when he managed to stand up to them because they were moving back at a fast speed. Jason asked them why the hell they were breaking into foreign lands. He was angry. When suddenly their commander shouted that they should not stand, but attack, everyone immediately rushed towards our main character. The kunai that Major grabbed began to glow blue. A fight ensued between our main character and the ninja fighters. One by one they flew away from the hero. They could not even touch him. Just a minute later, the last ninja fighter fell to the ground. Their commander stood in shock because he could not even imagine that such a strong fighter was standing in front of him. At this time, an explosion occurred near the tower. The soldiers were ready. One of the fighters shouted that he was approaching. No one should stick his head out. Their commander silently watched all this as they gathered. After which he radioed that when Major Jason arrived, do not attack, but simply send him to him. He thought that he needed to be careful and vigilant with this person, because it was difficult to guess what could be expected from him. He also remembered the past and thought that it was initially impossible to become his enemy because it was they who created this monster. In the boss's memories, our hero's face seemed stern and merciless. He remembered him as a killing machine that had no emotions. The radio said that Jason was in the air behind the glass. The commander approached the glass. The major's gaze and the member of the high command collided. The old man asked the guy how he was going to control and manage citizens in the future, to which the guy replied that, of course, he was not able to rule the country and civilians, including, but the 8th Division became part of the Emek Guild. The older man was surprised. He could not believe the Major's words. When suddenly he laughed, the commander of the Mech Guild did not understand why he was laughing. At this time, the screams of fighters and the hum of equipment were heard near the station, the fighters of the Mech Guild stood and awaited commands from the leadership. Elsa said that as soon as the negotiations were completed, a signal would come from the master. On Goethe Street, soldiers in camouflage uniforms were also preparing for battle. One of the fighters said that he was very nervous. They had planned this event so many times, but until now they had not been able to implement it. A loud sound of engines began to be heard. It was the sound of tank engines. At this time in Tokyo, it was a clear day. In Edo province, some screams were heard from the castle. There were flames burning inside the castle, which were expanding and expanding with every second. Four men stood in old samurai garb. When he suddenly shouted that Mr. Musashi had arrived, everyone knelt down. Some girls stood and looked straight into Musashi's face. The gentleman asked her where the fighters were, because they were supposed to return, but they still had not returned. One of the fighters said that the boss is very strong, he must return, Smiling and looking around, he said that it was time to leave. The tower stood in the darkness, glowing red. The fighters kept coming and coming. The equipment became more and more every few minutes. Along with the roar of the engines, people's screams began to be heard. They were scared. They didn't understand what was happening, why there were so many soldiers here. Were there really monsters nearby, they thought. The child began to cry. One of the men began to shout at the woman to shut up the child. The soldiers who were traveling inside the truck were suppressed. The military knew that in the worst-case scenario, there would be many casualties. The men in white shirts walked in handcuffs. They were arrested for attempting to rebel. In front of them stood Lieutenant Colonel Albert, who held his head high, showing his superiority. The man with glasses, seeing the Lieutenant Colonel, called him a traitor. But Albert was not taken aback. He answered that he was the traitor because he sold the country for his own good. After that, he shouted to the fighters to take him away, and he also authorized the use of force if he tried to throw something out. At this time, near the station, Blade cried out about the master's call. Jason returned to his comrades after negotiations. They surrounded him, starting to find out what was happening there. After some time, the lieutenant colonel stood on the roof, smoking thoughtfully. Behind him stood two sergeants who were looking after Jason. He thought that the chief and major had died. The remaining colonels and subordinates would be punished. The situation is changing quickly, and the Mac clan is destroying everything in its path. Subansa and the 8th Division became members of the Mech Guild, causing a reorganization to occur. Roads were cleared for the smooth transportation of food and ammunition. The awakened destroyed monsters in the surrounding area and suppressed individual groups. The major hunted monsters of the third level and above. However, only a few days have passed, the changes are just beginning. The entire command gathered around the map, 
They said that there were well-guarded strongholds nearby. Scott added that in Chan, there is a temple in which the relic of the great Tibetan Nan is kept, but even the approximate number of monsters located there is unknown. This artifact is comparable to the power of a silver cross or pure rain. Elsa said that it was in that area that the second operational command was located, and apparently it would be easy for them to defend themselves from attack due to the characteristics of the territory. Jason, interrupting her, said that the second operational command does not have armored and artillery units among its subordinates. He thinks that in this case the support of the chief would not hurt them, and he could be recruited. Albert said, The six-headed snake is going to collect the most powerful artifacts to ensure the safety of the fortress. Those who can get the artifacts first will have an advantage in the battle for monster stones, which is the most important currency of dominance in this era. Jason said that in addition, the information received suggests that Japanese forces are planning to enter our lands, using them as a stepping stone to dominance. He also suggested that they already know about the death of the chief. The general also began to talk about this topic. Elsa asked Jason if he was serious about crossing the mountain, to which he replied that it would not be easy at all. In addition, they could suffer huge losses. They needed to get there very quietly and do a cleanup. Sweat ran down the general's face and he asked if he was going to go alone, to which Jason replied that he was thinking correctly. At this time, shots were heard in Daegu, surrounded by mountains. The streets of the city were empty. Some girl ran quickly. Her gaze was a little frightened and sweat was running down her face. She was chased by several armed soldiers who shouted that she would not run far. They shouted at her to give up, but she shouted at them to ride as far as possible. The girl hid behind a concrete wall after which she began to aim at the fighters who were chasing her. She began firing at them and the servicemen immediately began to retreat to cover, after which they opened fire on the girl, who in turn covered herself with a wall. After the fire stopped, the fighters went towards the stairs in order to climb up to it. Suddenly one of the fleeing fighters fell to the ground. The rest began to fall behind him, someone fired at them. They shouted for the surviving fighters to retreat and hide. Suddenly a grenade flew towards them, there was a powerful explosion. Two men ran up to the girls asking her if she was safe. She started shouting at them because it was dangerous here, and they, in turn, said that they could not leave her. After a small argument, they went to the exit of the building. The girl was worried about her comrades. Sweat was running down her face. They retreated carefully, looking around to make sure there was no tail behind them. One of their comrades urged them on because someone was waiting for them. Suddenly, the man standing behind him screamed for him to step back, but it was too late. The ninja fighter attacked him. The fighters appeared in front of them. The commander of the masked fighters ordered them to kill them quickly, but then our main character appeared. His gaze was stern as usual and his aura was frightening. The man with glasses angrily hit the table. He shouted about why no one had appeared yet, because they should have already caught that girl. At that time, his subordinate consoled him. Listening to the words of his subordinate, he thought that it was true that in extreme cases, the Japanese would intercept it. Jason looked around as if trying to find someone. The man and the girl stood scared. They did not understand who was standing in front of them and what they wanted from them. The ninjas began to surround them. At this time, the men raised their machine guns and then began to fire. But they did not wait. They attacked in response. One of the men already thought that his life was over because there were no options to evade. Suddenly, in the blink of an eye, it was thrown back. The blow was powerful. The crunching of bones was heard. The man standing nearby also did not have time to dodge the blow from the katana. But then our main character appeared again, who managed to protect him. The rest of the ninja fighters immediately attacked him, shouting that Jason needed to be killed as quickly as possible. But the major had already released his power. Using it, he threw the attackers back. A loud crash of bones was heard. Moans were heard. People fell from the sky. At this time, our hero walked past them. Their commander approached quickly in order to attack unnoticed. A smile was visible on his face, but Jason hit him on the leg as clumsily as possible, thereby tripping him up. He didn't even understand how he ended up in the air. But he quickly regrouped. He tried to attack the master, but he hit him in the face. Jason seemed to touch him lightly, but the fall broke the ground, Looking at the standing men and girl, he asked them if they had taken control of this area. If so, then he would ask them some questions. They stood stunned by what they saw. They could not believe their eyes. 
The girl recalled how not so long ago she was singing professionally. Thanks to the fact that she often appeared on screens, she managed to gain enormous popularity. However, when she returned home from work, the whole world turned upside down, a reality that was worse than in the movies. She didn't even immediately realize that this was the real world, because when she was driving home from work and saw the monsters, she thought that they were making a movie. At that moment, she realized that she needed to get to Seoul. In this case, she would not have to see any monsters or the antics of crazy idiots. For some reason, that was when Getu was clear of monsters. Therefore, all the surviving people moved there. They had hope that they could unite all their strength and overcome this hell. Therefore, they followed the Second Operations Command located there. In addition, she always gathered and calmed people down, using the fact that she was a celebrity. They sincerely believed her, which brought considerable benefits. However, at some point the situation changed and the Second Operational Command began to perform strange actions. They began to send people to the lair of monsters, where they forced civilians to work. She could not understand anything why tens of thousands of people with curved shovels and lanterns should risk their lives to try to desecrate royal tombs and graves. She later learned about the real reason that they needed to get from those very tombs. However, this is no longer mattered. Since then, only two categories of people remained in Getu, those who had already been taken away and those who did not want this. The last leader of the rebels was Joe, and she sincerely believed him so she became a member of the resistance. The girl told her story while in some warehouse building. At the very end, she added that their leader was taken by these scum. Our hero asked them what they were going to do next, to which the girl firmly answered that they were going to save the leader. Immediately, the guy asked them if they had any plan. She also told how their leader was captured. Jason told them that if the military could extract information from their leader, they would be in for a trap. Turning around and leaving, Jason said that he would save their leader. They stood in bewilderment because why would he save him? At this time, there was silence near Daegu City Hall and night was falling. Some groans were heard in the basement of the building. A beaten man sat on a chair, his clothes were covered in blood. His entire body was mutilated and there were nails sticking out of his arms and legs. The mouth was tied with a rope. There was not even a living place on the face. The door opened in the room and two men entered. They were Japanese, one of them was in military uniform and the other was in samurai armor. They removed the rope from his mouth. The man in turn immediately asked why they came again, because they would not break him. The Japanese man in military uniform said that if he accepted their offer, they would help them. The tied up man, smiling, began to say that this was an excellent offer, but he just needed to get rid of the major of the second operational command, because now he needed to not only improve the weather, but also increase his salary. When suddenly his face changed and he added that stop playing at being a soldier, the country is rotting because of you, the man in military uniform replied that he was still alive because they want it. After which, smiling, he said that the ninjas would catch the girl. The man got angry, calling the man opposite him names. When shots suddenly began to be heard, a man with glasses shouted that he needed to leave. The tied-up man wondered if it was really them. At this time, the military fired at the attacker. The attacker was our main character, Major Jason, who raised a barrier around himself to protect himself from shots. The military stood in shock. They could not understand who was standing in front of them and where he got such power from. Suddenly, three military men ran up with an RPG. Jason raised the barrier around him again. There was a powerful explosion and the walls broke. The soldiers lay on the ground. Jason slowly moved forward. There was a crash and Jason broke down the door. Walking further, he found the commander. He appeared right in front of him. Jason thought that the situation was not so dangerous. The man sitting on the chair asked our main character who he was. The girl standing on the street was thinking about how everything was happening there. Suddenly, two men appeared one of them holding the other by the neck. The girl shouted to her comrades not to shoot. The girl asked who he was. Jason stood silently looking at them. After some time, he answered that his name is Jason. He is the leader of the Mac Guild, which owns several territories and regions. He asked them why they were fighting with them. After some time, groans were heard in the warehouse. Jason still continued to hold the man by the neck. His whole body was covered in bruises. He asked our hero to kill him. Coming out of the warehouse, men targeted him. He wiped his hand with a handkerchief. They stood in shock. 
The girl asked if he knew some man. Sometime later, they were driving in a car discussing their leader. As I drove through the city, they saw the devastation. There was a lot of broken military equipment lying around. The military fighters ran away at the sight of Jason, calling him a monster. With the help of his strength, he cleared the road, throwing away cars and tanks. No one was even going to fight him. Everyone immediately ran away at the sight of him. Turning to his new comrades, he said that they could not go further. They either stayed here or moved back. Jason asked the man in front of him his name, to which he began to ask why he did not answer who he was. The major continued to remain silent, looking at him with a cold gaze, when suddenly he felt danger from behind. Quickly taking out his blade, he repelled the attack. The man behind the master asked him what was happening here. The samurai stood right in front of our hero, holding a katana. The man began to say that this samurai was very strong and that he should be careful with him. The samurai said that he thought Jason was a worthy opponent. He thought that it seemed to him that his skills were not so strong, but he could not judge him based on this alone. Someone like him might have the ability to improve skills. The samurai shouted that his name was Kojima. No matter what he did, the sword was with him all his life. Jason, in turn, did not introduce himself in response. The enemy rushed towards the master, saying that he would no longer need the name because he would die now. He thought that he had the fourth level in Kendo, but regardless of rank, he had few opponents. When the world changed, he withered away from boredom, before he had fun because he could swing the sword as much as he wanted. However, monsters were never able to satisfy his sense of power. Sometimes he had to deal with others like him, but they were no different from monsters. The power and artifacts he received were not used properly. Since then, a lot of time has passed. The samurai still thought the same. The blades of our heroes touched. A moment later, Samui was on his knee. He couldn't get up. He didn't have enough strength. He didn't understand what was happening. The ground shook and broke right under him. The pressure in the air made the bound man tremble. Jason stood as lightly as possible and held the sword, showing his superiority. He asked him if this was all he wanted to show him, when suddenly he screamed. He somehow managed to escape and jumped on our main character. But the master's movements were much faster. His sword ended up under the attacker's katana. His hands were cut off and the ground was covered in blood. Our heroes were standing near the map when suddenly a letter arrived. It said that the temple was destroyed, and the reason for this was Japan. Carefully monitor the movements of the monsters in peas and withdraw the troops waiting nearby. It is also necessary to lead the monsters through Joe. They told the lieutenant colonel about this. He said that there was nothing strange in their actions, but damaging the collection of Tibetan writings was stupid. Scott pointed his finger at the map saying that the evidence was that a large number of high-class monsters began to move around the temple and entered the security zone, the radius of which was 40 kilometers. Elsa said that they cannot watch from the sidelines, they need to do something. Our main character stood on the roof, behind him stood a girl with a stroller in which a man was sitting. They were all silent looking at our main character. The man sitting in the chair thought that this man was able to destroy the mayor's office of the city of Getu, but this does not mean that the second operational command was destroyed. The mayor's office was one of the many headquarters. He must somehow make a deal with him. Suddenly he said that he was a little rude at the first meeting. He asked for forgiveness from our hero and also thanked him for the medicines that he gave him. When suddenly Jason spoke up, asking him if he knew about the temple writings. The man shouted that it was impossible for the writings to be destroyed. The master said that this was his mistake. The information he received after interrogation indicated that Japan had long known about the existence of these relics. He thinks that they realized that it would be impossible to transport them, therefore just destroyed. The man was shocked by the words of our hero. He lowered his head and felt sad. Jason said that this is not such a problem. Now they are between monsters of the fifth levels. Very soon they will reach these lands, to which the man was even more dumbfounded, because they are finished. He talked about how more than 6,000 people and 400 awakened people died at the hands of the green level. He began to pull out the catheter, saying that something needed to be done, because everyone would die. Jason came closer to him and said that they had a lot of things to do in the future, so first of all he needed to take care of his health. Then he added that he should not worry because he would deal with this monster. At this time there was silence at the airbase. 
A man in the building was shouting that it was impossible for City Hall to be destroyed. He was thinking that they had recently lost contact with the Major General of the Capital Defense Forces after he said that he wanted to come to them for shelter. Suddenly a bullet pierced the glass, breaking it. It flew right into the head of the airbase commander, passing right through him. Her impact was so powerful that it broke the wall. The general fell. All the soldiers began to scream about what was happening. Looking out the window, they saw a man standing holding a stroller. In the carriage sat their former comrade and the current commander of the uprising. They recognized him. They started shouting that they should quickly go down and grab him, when suddenly one of the fighters shouted that this was the same man who was in the mayor's office. They all went outside, standing in front of our main character. One of the fighters came out, introducing himself as a colonel. He asked what they needed, to which the man in the carriage replied that he knew that most of the relics brought from the tombs were here. He told them to bring him the king's divine bell, to which he shouted that he really thought that they would just give it to him. Suddenly the monster's screams were heard. They were frightening. The fighters immediately began to take aim, shouting that everyone should line up and no one should run away. The man in the stroller asked them if they remembered the green-eyed monster. If so, then a monster much worse than him would now arrive. He started shouting that he was not going to negotiate and that they would drag the relic faster. There was silence. Everyone stood in bewilderment. At this time, people's screams were heard nearby in the city. A huge crowd of monsters destroyed everything in their path. Behind them walked a huge monster. His eyes were blue and the air seemed to make him tremble. Suddenly, the monsters began to seem to hear some kind of call. It began to beckon them. At this time, our main character was ringing the bell. Its power was that all dark forces were dispelled and the monsters weakened. Jason recalled talking about how the city was attacked by a green-eyed monster. He also thought that he needed to be as careful as possible because they were different from those with whom he had fought before. The monsters did not understand what was happening. They began to twitch. Some of them fell. The blue-eyed monster began to scream and scream. It was as if he was trying to bring the rest of the monsters to their senses. Our main character came down from the roof straight to them. They noticed our hero and drool began to flow from their mouths. Jason told them to shut up and then pulled out a weapon. It was a huge minigun the master began to shoot. In a split second, the monsters scattered into small pieces. Blue-Eyed rushed towards our hero in order to attack him. But our hero dodged with a smile on his face. He started to climb onto the roof, after which he continued to fire from the minigun from there. The building on which our hero stood began to petrify, turning into some kind of light stone. Jason quickly jumped off the roof. He tried to keep his distance from the stone monster. He thought that the cartridges were not taking him. He threw the minigun aside. Taking out his katana, he went into close combat with the monster. At the same time, he began to release his fiery power. But the monster was not going to defend himself. He attacked in response. The stone and the flame collided and a strong wind rose. Blue-Eyed tried to trample our hero, but he was able to react quickly and dodged the attack. Immediately launched a fire attack. Parts of the stones that were on the monster's body scattered in different directions, causing chaos in the area. At this time, Amir was sitting on the roof. He and his comrades watched the battle. They were shocked. The girl standing behind recalled her conversation with Jason. Standing in the weapons warehouse, they asked him if he was going to form a team. Jason replied that he was not going to form a team. He told the girl that he was not sure that he would be able to use it. There was a roar and dust rose. The monster did not stop attacking our hero, but he successfully dodged all attacks. Getting close to the monster, Jason tried to attack it. But he began to frighten some energy from his mouth. Jason thought that the sword was too short and he would not be able to attack his heart. He raised a barrier in front of him. The monster fired a beam from its mouth straight at our hero. The major's barrier withstood the onslaught of the blue-eyed monster. Suddenly, torpedoes began to appear behind our hero. Using his power, he sent them towards the monster. The monsters looked into the air. Some of them even managed to run away. Jason smiled, giggling, saying that there was going to be a huge explosion. All torpedoes went towards the monster. He, in turn, tried to defend himself by raising a stone shield above himself. There was an explosion that destroyed everything. Jason began to take out artifacts. Some of them he had already used. Some were new to him. Having put everything on himself, he released the power from them. Animals and riders appeared. They were ready for battle. Jason fell to his knee and thought that the effect was simply incredible. 
but the risks were also great. The shield withstood the powerful explosion, leaving the monster unharmed. He screamed he got angry. At this time, our main character had already put on his mask. He was overwhelmed with strength. All of his combat skills increased several times. Even the air seemed to be distorted around him. The blue-eyed monster tried to attack our hero. He was furious. But for him, everything seemed to be slowing down. Now his speed was several times greater than before. He immediately dodged the attack, heading towards the monster. Approaching him, he released a fireball, but the stone beast was able to defend itself. As soon as the smoke from the explosion cleared, Jason was already next to the monster. It went right through him, breaking his body. He moved very quickly. The blue-eyed man did not have time to follow his actions and could not have time to defend himself. The monster regenerated, but Jason did not stop attacking it. He jumped directly above the monster's head, gathering the last of his energy into his katana, after which he dealt a colossal blow to him. Jason cut the monster in half and blood began to pour out of it. The monster was successfully defeated. At that same second, Jason fell to his knee, his strength running out. He immediately took off his mask. His whole face was covered in sweat. His comrades who stood on the roof watched the battle through binoculars. Suddenly, one of them said that it was all over. The military men standing on a nearby roof could not believe their eyes that he had managed it. They just stood there in bewilderment, discussing the fight. The colonel with his head down ordered everyone to gather, after which he added that they were surrendering. After some time at the airbase, everyone gathered again. The rebels stood with weapons aimed at the military. They, in turn, stood with their weapons lowered, their heads down. The colonel told Jason that he was transferring all his power to him. The rebels were glad to hear this because the war between them was over. Amir exhaled easily. Jason drank his coffee. Officials associated with Japan involved in radiation contamination of water and massacres will be thoroughly examined and punished. However, there was a long journey ahead. There were no army forces here, and although the citizens no longer had to do hard work, the monsters that surrounded the city of Geta made this place unsafe. Thanks to Jason, casualties were kept to a minimum, but no matter how strong he is, he alone cannot ensure the safety of all areas. Amir said that although military guards were organized, these people had never encountered monsters, so it would be difficult. The rebels said among themselves that they had never seen one squad destroy monsters so easily, after which Amir said that they have the banner of the Mac Guild. The clatter of armor was heard. Blade, Elsa, and Ella moved ahead. Scott and Robert walked not far from them. A detachment of the lieutenant colonel arrived from Seoul. The Mac Guild appeared before the rebels. They, in turn, stood shocked because several groups of awakened people appeared before them at once, and their aura was frightening. Amir, with a trembling voice, said that these were the people they had recently talked about. Jason confirmed that this was the Mac Guild. After some time, he added that from now on, they are their allies. Each of them greeted Amir. He, in turn, began to talk about himself. He also asked for forgiveness for greeting them while sitting. Scott, pointing to Ella, said that they have excellent doctors. They will cure him. Robert drew attention to Layla. He said that she was a celebrity. Elsa apologized, after which she turned to the master, telling him that they had disobeyed the order. She was ready to take full responsibility and was ready to accept the punishment. The men with higher ranks said that they had agreed on the plan altogether to which Jason replied that it was the right decision. They said that most of the monsters had been destroyed, to which Blade said, laughing, that they left monsters of the fourth level and higher for the master. The situation changed instantly after their arrival. Everything went quickly and in an orderly manner. They also took care of the monsters guiding into Geta. At the same time, they were engaged in the restoration of the city. Mass treatment of the wounded began in the hospitals. Amir also felt better day by day. In addition, they did not forget to get rid of traitors. Jason was engaged in destroying the strongest monsters alone. Elsa said that three monsters of the third level and two individuals of the fourth live in this area. Gary talked about sending in an armored vehicle to secure the nuclear power plant. Jason gave the orders. Ella was to prepare the medical supplies. Kate was to use the incense burner to concentrate on defending this place. At this time, screams of monsters were heard at the nuclear power plant. A crowd of monsters tried to get into the station. The military, in turn, fired at them. They did not want to let them get closer. One of the fighters, running up to the commander, said that they could not hold out any longer. 
The armored installations were completely destroyed by a monster of the fourth level. He replied to gather all the people in one place. The level four monster was getting closer and closer. The fighters lined up and prepared for battle. A green-eyed creature appeared before them, when suddenly the monster's attention focused on the sky. There was an explosion that destroyed the small monsters. This was our main character. The green-eyed one used magic to protect himself. The monster immediately began to use magic to attack our main character. A wall of water rose and some colas began to appear. The major swung his sword, sending an aura towards the ice shield. The shield was broken. Small fragments from the shield were sent towards the monster. After which Jason dealt a crushing blow to the monster. A strong wind arose from the speed of our hero. The soldiers watching the battle could not believe their eyes. After they dealt with this situation, they went to Seoul. They would finally be able to get out into the outside world after living in hell for six months, along with their relics, such as the king's divine bell, and also two powerful katanas. It seems that the curse was not lifted. Could it be that he could not find a way? This room, it seems that this is the information that he left for himself. Apparently, everything that is here is very valuable. If he tried to remember everything that is in this room, he would have to fall into a state close to death more than once. At this time, painful cries of creatures were heard in the cities. The guild fighters fired at them, but they were able to break through a little further. Second level monsters were able to defeat ordinary fighters. They in turn began to retreat so that their ranks would not decrease further. Elsa also participated in the battle. Using her strength, she delivered crushing blows, charging bullets with her energy. Blade fought with her on the team, also attacking the creatures. His blows were much more useful than Elsa's. The battle was over. Elsa reported on the radio that they had successfully completed it. Ava and Robert joined them, also saying that they had cleared the mountain from the other side. From the east, Julie also reported that they were clear. Gary, hearing reports that it was now their turn, gave the order for everyone to get ready. In front of them stood huge KN-179-155mm cannons. Huge explosions began to sound, sending smoke into the air. The soldiers guarded the bell by beating it. The cannons were fired to clear the rest of the area. After some time, the explosion stopped and there was silence. The command stood and watched everything with binoculars. They discussed how this is an incredible power. They have melted the bronze swords and will use them as projectiles. One of them said that he was given the order to form a machine gun unit. Gary started talking about how the orders are absolute. Suddenly the world collapsed and a large number of people died without knowing the reason for what happened. After the army that was supposed to protect the people began to slowly lose their humanity, after the disaster all the suffering fell on the survivors, of course they resisted the monsters in order to survive. But it took a lot of effort to get them at least some information, but the acquired knowledge could not change the situation. Firstly, monsters are incredibly powerful creatures. For example, if a squadron of troops can destroy a monster of the second level, then even after regrouping, it will not be able to defeat a monster of the fourth level or higher. Weapons, strategy, tactics, alliances, all these elements have always placed man at the top of the food chain, but in the face of powerful monsters, they have lost their importance. No one expected that a simple change of commander could directly change the situation. Suddenly, screams began to be heard that someone wanted to go to Japan. Gary asked what the reasons were for hunting a level 5 monster. Jason explained his position by saying that there is a man named Musashi living in Japan. I dreamed about him a few days ago, and besides, he is sure that the incident in the city of Daigu was connected with him. He also said that the six-headed snake is now in China, but in any case it may end up here. Before Jason left, he wanted to get rid of strong monsters. Jason also wanted to deal with the level 6 monster in order to ensure the safety of his comrades. They needed to show their true strength so that others would begin to fear them. Our heroes fought a blue level monster. As soon as they discovered him, they immediately began firing at him. They also struck the bell to weaken it. The monster began to get angry because some unknown forces began to take away his power. A man was approaching him. This was our main character, who had already used the animal summoning artifact. The monster noticed our hero, who in turn thought that he needed to deal with him as quickly as possible since time was running out. He immediately went into battle trying to strike the monster. The animals dug into him with their teeth and claws. The sounds of battle were heard throughout the area. 
Our hero's comrades stood nearby. They used their powers to help him. Blue-eyed was losing. The animals struck at him. Small fragments from the battle scattered for several kilometers around. Our main character was flying in the air, using his power. The entire personal detachment of the Major watched the battle. The battle did not stop even for a few seconds. None of them could even catch their breath normally. Everyone was looking forward to victory. Suddenly, Jason's eyes took on an animalistic look. A second later, the animal was cut into two parts. Huge dust rose in the air. It seemed that Jason and the monster had awakened even the air. Elsa radioed that the situation had been resolved. Gary grabbed the radio tighter and said that this was a victory. All the fighters began to rejoice because the monster was defeated. At this time, it was night in Tokyo. The fighter standing next to Musashi said that everything would end very soon. Musashi, in turn, replied that how many people would die did not matter at all, because after the victory they would be able to join the ranks of workers from the regions of the Mech Guild. He thought that the six-headed snake would also invade them. Also, this masked fighter said that there has been no news or communication with the fighters who were sent to those lands for a long time. Jason, Albert, and Gary were standing on the pier, discussing something. Jason told them to concentrate on the electricity and wait. He would contact them very soon. Gary asked the departing Jason if this was really a war. He also added that he would never even have thought that he would be in the center of such events. He replied that one should not give in to emotions. Only those who have never seen war can truly appreciate her. Suddenly there were shouts that they were sailing. Gary continued his discussion with Albert about Jason's words. The water was calm and it was deep night. Suddenly, screams from the military began to be heard that a ship was approaching. Everyone began to take up their fighting positions. They shouted that an unidentified vessel was approaching. Everyone had to be on alert. The fighters began to run out of the buildings, take up weapons, and line up. Over the loudspeaker, shouts began to be heard asking them to stop and identify themselves. Otherwise, they would start shooting, but the ship ignored them. After a few minutes of waiting, they opened fire on the ship. There was an explosion, and the ship was destroyed. As soon as the fire stopped, a man hovered directly above the military. One of the fighters reported on the radio that the situation had been resolved and the ship had been destroyed. While in the air, our main character, Jason, was watching them. The city of Kitakyushu, Fukuoka Prefecture, adhered to its traditions, namely swords. At the Kitakyushu City Hall, there was a stronghold of one of the detachments. Some man said that a week after Tsushima suddenly collapsed, the number of monsters began to rapidly decrease. Kyushu branch manager Hiyoshi Tai said he lacked the means to send compensation to the victims' families. Kyushu is home to the eight-tailed fox, and the best location in this area is near the port. He exhaled cigarette smoke with some kind of burden on his soul. Jason, watching the city, thought that this is a city of drugs, prostitution, murder, human trafficking, as well as the Yakuza. This is a city where all the criminals gather. He also thought that this would be a good place to hide. Suddenly, screams began to be heard from the establishment where our hero was resting. One of the men shouted that it was necessary to go where chaos prevailed in order to absorb the territories. They also began to joke that swords used to be decorations, but now they are the main weapon. They also discussed that in the lands where they want to go, there is some strong man on a horse. They also said that they could deal with the Mac Guild in an hour. Suddenly, one of the men started shouting that they had a problem because Musashi was going to bring troops here. Suddenly at the bar, our hero began to say that this was logical, because it had all been planned for a long time. He also asked them, Kenji Nakagawa, this person is really the head of Kitakyushu. To which they took out their weapons and began shouting and asking him who he was. To which he, turning to them, replied that he was asking the questions here. Suddenly the bottles on the bar counter broke. They scattered in different directions, after which they began to fly in the air. The men standing in front of Jason could not understand what was happening. As soon as they shouted fire, all the glass flew in their direction. Screams of pain began to be heard. There was a crash. The wall of the building was broken. Their leader was still on his feet. He asked Jason who he was. To which he replied that it didn't matter to him what condition he was in. He needed answers. But he tried to attack our hero, shouting that he should not be so arrogant. But he successfully dodged, hitting the attacker. Then he knocked the sword out of his hands, hitting him several more times. Having caught his sword, he cut off his hand. 
Just a second after the start of the fight, the attacker was lying on the ground. The man stopped the bleeding, after which he began to talk about how at the beginning of 2017, sea monsters, four of them, settled on a Japanese island. Subsequently, monsters began to appear everywhere. This was accompanied by earthquakes, typhoons, and tsunamis. After the disaster stopped, Japan was on the verge of destruction. It was at that moment that the savior Mr. Musashi appeared in the country. He drove out the monsters and founded a new empire. This man, he is going to classify and divide people, having built a new power. The man began to shout that Mr. Musashi is like a god and that Jason can never compare with him. When suddenly Jason landed a kick right in the throat. Jason thought that if Musashi was heading here, it would make everything easier. He asked the bird to convey his words and it took off. There is a level six monster that was mentioned, as well as one each of the third and fourth levels, an eight-tailed fox on the mountain, a white snake, and also a giant turtle in the throat. Jason thought about starting with the weak ones. At this time, in the provinces, the detachment worshipped Musashi. Four heavenly kings sat in front of him. Musashi said that this was impossible. Now that the island was taken from them, they need to lead the army. They also said that they would need to get through the eight-tailed fox in order to get to the port. Musashi began to shout displeasedly that China had already been able to reach their lands. Everyone listened carefully to Musashi's words. His last words were that we couldn't wait any longer. It was necessary to organize a hunt for monsters. He gave the order for everyone to prepare for battle. Jason's first specimen was a snake. Its size was amazing. It made snake-like sounds, but the pressure in the air was frightening. Jason stood right in front of her, preventing her from moving any further. His hand hardened and he smiled and told her that she would be his first victim here. Almost immediately a fight broke out between them. The main character began to climb up the building. The snake began to envelop the building, simultaneously squeezing it and breaking it. Once he climbed to the very top, he began to use his strength. His energy was much more powerful than the snake's, it repelled it. Having lost her balance, she fell to the ground, the Major's fist hardened. He hit the yellow-eyed man right in the head. The sleeve could not stand it and began to tear. Victory was our main character. Screams were heard in the port. The splashing of water could be heard for several kilometers around. A huge turtle reigned here. Noticing the standing man, she went to the ground. She immediately rushed in his direction. The Master, in turn, looking at her, thought that she had an excellent physique. Gathering energy in his hand, he touched the ground. Ice began to appear. A huge ice wall rose right in front of the running turtle. By hitting it directly with her head, she was able to break it. One of her heads was badly damaged. The other tried to eat our hero, but he managed to jump away. She broke everything in her path. Dust rose. Flying in the air, the head of the Mac Guild thought that the thickness of the wall was ten meters, and its strength was over the eighth level. But he was able to break it. Smiling, he thought that this was only the fifth level. Starting to gather strength, he began to approach the turtle with incredible speed. Just a second later, he was already near her. She didn't have time to react or defend herself. Jason struck with colossal force, slicing the turtle. Victory was again our main character. As a result, our main character has already received a white snake crystal and a giant turtle crystal. At this time, people were screaming on the island of Tsushima. One of the fighters reported to Elsa that most of the monsters in the area had been destroyed, and no second-level monsters were found nearby. The girl, seeing the bird, extended her hand, after which she heard Jason's words. She shouted that they were going to Japan. The entire personal squad of our hero gathered around the table. Jason said that they had to undergo careful preparation. They did not have much time and experience there to defend themselves from enemy attacks. It is also not possible to know what is happening in other places. At the moment, it will be difficult for them to solve internal problems with the current combat power, despite the fact that they are threatened from both sides by Musashi and the six-headed snake, they are not able to distribute their forces to resist. It was necessary to take the initiative into our own hands and begin preparations. Now there are no mass movements of high-level monsters across the country. It is necessary to move 90% of the entire force to the south and leave small groups in different cities to protect the residents, the Major continued to say. He also said that as soon as he penetrated Japan, the armored troops and the awakened ones should move towards the island of Tsushima. If anything happened, he said he would contact them. They had to provide protection and be ready. 
Everyone stood and looked at our main character, thinking that it was not in vain that they chose him. At this time, in the former places where the snake and turtle reigned, the tramp of people was heard. A huge number of fighters were in a hurry somewhere. As they ran closer, they saw a dead white snake. Taya's face was covered in sweat. He couldn't believe his eyes. Walking towards the port, they saw a dead turtle. Everyone stood in shock because who could defeat such powerful creatures? It scared them. By evening, they all returned to the city hall building. No one could believe what they saw. The soldiers who remained guarding the building were also shocked by the stories of their comrades. They began to talk among themselves about how good it was, but others were not happy, and arguments began to arise between us. The security of the building was improved. Everyone was wondering what was going on here. The manager stood and puzzled over the disappearance of the monsters, because who could kill them? When suddenly Jason appeared on the chair in front of him, the manager in turn did not even notice it right away. As soon as he noticed him, he quickly attacked our hero. The sword moved with incredible speed, bringing it closer to our hero's neck.